Nation is proud to present Golden Gopher Football. Brought to you in part by Holiday Station Stores. By Subway. By your new Dodge dealer. And by Senex Land O'Lakes. It's the final football Saturday afternoon in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The Wolverines will host. It's the final football Saturday afternoon in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The Wolverines will host Minnesota's Golden Gophers at stake. The Little Brown Jugs. And good afternoon, everyone. Dick Bramer with you on Midwest Sports Channel, along with Keith Bonhorst and Sandy Stevens. It was three weeks ago today that the Golden Gophers left Madison, Wisconsin, with Paul Bunyan's axe. They would love to take home the Little Brown Jug here this afternoon. The Wolverines have had it for the last seven years. And Sandy, on the field, we may have a record-setting performance by both tailbacks for Minnesota and Michigan. You're exactly right, Dick. We have two of the premier running backs of the country uh, with Tyrone Weaver. Lead, who was the leading Heisman candidate uh, going into the season, but he sustained a shoulder injury and has kept him from coming back to his true form until now. Chris Darkins, on the other hand, with the Golden Gophers, he only needs 79 yards to surpass uh, uh, Darrell Thompson as far as the single season rushing record. So uh, we're looking for a great treat today from two great running backs. Michigan came into the season hoping for a Rose Bowl berth and perhaps a national championship. That hasn't happened this year, largely because of an ineffective defense. If you followed Gopher football this year, you know Minnesota's defense has had kind of a, a hot and cold year itself. It has been hot and cold, but today it's going to be a key for Ed Hawthorne and the rest of his mates to get after Todd Collins. He tends to run the ball like a running back. He's a brave quarterback, but Moeller's been upset that he's been getting hurt. He tends to turn the ball over after he gets banged around a little bit, so they're going to have to get after him. This is a typical football Saturday here in Ann Arbor. Another crowd of 105,000, but incredibly, the Wolverines have already lost three times here in their home stadium. The Gophers will try to make it number four. The opening kickoff coming up in just a moment. Gophers will receive and take the wind. Okay. Columbus, Ohio, to get to the Citrus Bowl. It's a beautiful afternoon for football and a capacity crowd. Once again, let's go quickly down to the field and Mike Max. You're right. Beautiful day. Weather conditions are perfect down here. If you haven't experienced college football till you stand down here. The band's playing Hail to the Victors. Hundred and some thousand people are singing along. Quickly, the Gophers, they're going to try to establish Chris Darkins with the run. They're going to try to stick to the same basic game plan that they've had success with so far. Nothing different, nothing fancy. Dick? Rashawn Early and Raphael Cooper back to receive the kick. It's a short kick taken by one of the up men at the 23. Hit immediately. And down at the 23-yard line. Chris Smith, the backup linebacker, fielded the kick. He was tackled by Ty Law and Anthony Williams. Tim Shade running the show for Minnesota. By the way, Michigan won the toss, and they deferred their choice for the second half but shade has played very well for minnesota since getting the starting nod it kind of surprised me michigan deferred because their defense has not been that strong the gophers might have a chance to get up on top quick here darkens of course the running back hanging the tight end in motion and darken smothered after a gain of a couple of yards first man there for michigan was steve morrison darkens has a chance this afternoon to pass Daryl Thompson as Sandy pointed out in the open. Aaron Osterman at a wide receiver spot. Chuck Rios needs 12 catches this year to tie Omar Douglas for the career receiving mark and the front five for Minnesota. Second down and nine for the Gophers. 2-2 Atwell slips as he moves in motion. Osterman makes the grab and is shouldered out of bounds at the 32-yard line. 
Woodrow Hankin bounced him out of bounds. Close to a go for first down. Wolverines have changed their defense a little bit this year. They've gone sometimes with a three-man front, sometimes with a four-man front. I think they've been searching for an answer, especially in stopping the uh, pass. They've had a lot of trouble stopping, stopping the uh, opponent's pass offense. Third and two for the Gophers. Darkin slipped as he started to move in motion. Jay dumps it across. Rios has it. And the Gopher first down at the 39-yard line. Tackled by Clarence Thompson. I, I went down on that field before the game, and it is a little slick. And I think one reason might be because this, this field is down in a hole. I mean, we're, that field is down about 50 feet below the street surface. And I think he might get a little more moisture down there, at least early in the day. Jim Wacker said last week's loss against Illinois, one of the toughest, and I think he'd be hard-pressed to come up with a tougher loss than he suffered last week. But the Gophers have been pretty resilient this year. They've had some tough losses and come back and, and played pretty well. First and 10, Minnesota. Darkins gets his second carry. Turns the corner. Darkins across the 45 to the 46 before he's hit hard by Ty Law and Chuck Winters. Being able to come back, bounce back from those losses is really a tribute to the seniors, too, and to the leadership. Guys like Chris Darkins, who's only a junior, but is the captain of the team. It's going to be, it's up to the players to really come back when you have a loss like that. Uh, the, the coaches can talk all day, but it's, it's up to the players. Second and three for Minnesota. An empty backfield. Shade throws to Osterman, cuts up field. Aaron Osterman across the 35 to the 34. Clarence Thompson made the tackle. Nice pass protection again. That was one of the keys last week. They had great pass protection by the Gold offensive line. And a lot of times they're at a disadvantage. There's no back in the backfield. The defensive linemen know they're going to be throwing the ball. And they're coming after the quarterback. And so they've, they've done a great job this year. Gary Moeller's had problems with his defense. All year long, in every game so far this year, the Wolverines have allowed at least two touchdowns, and now here are the Gophers in their first possession, driving into Wolverine territory. Chris Darkins gets to the 31-yard line. Nice tackle by Steve Morrison. Short pickup for Darkins. Give him forward progress to the 30-yard line. It'll be second and six. They're moving the ball right down the field here. They look like they're coming along pretty good. Shade audibling at the line. To the sideline, Osterman was out of bounds. He makes the catch, and they're going to allow it. Osterman was, I thought, out of bounds and came back in to make the catch. He sure was, Dick. It's about time they had a, a call go in their favor, though. Wow. After last week, that was that was an obvious miss by the officials on the sidelines. There were two of them there too. Did we see it here? Osterman will be to the left of your screen. Oh. Osterman did a great job of catching that on the defender. He kind of got positioned like a rebound for basketball. Right. And uh, he did a great job of getting position for that pass. Shade the, also laid it up there beautifully. The Gophers call a timeout. Tim Shade with a good week last week. 12-34 left in the first quarter. An impressive drive for Minnesota so far. They've gotten it to the Michigan 10, first and 10, first and goal. To the end zone, incomplete. Pass intended for Aaron Osterman. He was double covered. And no, those aren't flags. Those are uh, paper cups or something being thrown in the corner of the end zone. And there's plenty of it being thrown down there. I'm not sure what that marshmallow is I hear now. Oh, he really laid, he laid it up. They tried to do that similar pass that they did against Illinois. 
where Osterman lays out and made a beautiful catch last week. Second and goal. On the delay to Javon Jackson. Got to the line, was hit hard there, a short game. Deion Johnson, the cornerback, came up to stick Javon Jackson. Here Kim Shea goes back, gives it to Johnson on a draw play. He goes up, Johnson makes a beautiful tackle for him, right on about the seven-yard line. Third and goal from the eighth. Shade to the corner. Incomplete intended for Chuck Rios in the far corner. Woodrow Hankins with the defensive coverage for the Wolverines. It looked like they had had him open there too. Rios was open, but that was a, that was a touch pass all the way and went a little long. You're right, Keith. He, he threw it right out there, but he threw it wisely. He put it where if, if his man didn't get it, nobody got it, especially to be in that position uh, where you got a field goal coming up. You want those short three points. Schalberg has a chance to get into the record books himself with 14 field goals. The school record is 18, set by Paul Rogan in the late 70s. And he missed it last. A rare miss from Mike Schalberg, and the Gopher drive comes up seven yards short. And then the field goal is no good. That's, that's really disappointing. After an impressive drive like that, you want to put some points on the board and get, get Michigan's defense questioning themselves again because they've had problems. And to go away with nothing here is, uh, is tough. One thing I did see, the strings were right toward the kicker there, you see. Well, when you have the strings there, sometimes it'll it'll knock the ball one way or the other. Ideally, you want the strings facing toward the goalpost, and you want to have the flat surface to kick from. Todd Collins brings the Michigan offense onto the field. Tyron Wheatley fumbles the football. A pile up at the 20-yard line, and the Gophers have it. On the first carry for Tyrone Wheatley, he coughs it up, and the Gophers get a big break. Nice hitting by the Gophers. There was that time there was no cutback for Wheatley, and he got hit when he tried to cut back. It's going to be important that the Gophers keep leverage so that if the, they're, they're great running backs from Michigan, if they try to cut back, they're there to hit them. You're right. Watch number 20, Justin Kenzemius, right there. And then Crawford Jordan helped out. Lankford, or excuse me, Jerome Davis, the third man there. And Rodney Heath with the recovery. And the Gopher offense is quickly back on the field. Got to have seven on this drive, though. Shade to Darkens. Inside the 15 to the 13-yard line before Steve Morrison anchors him. There's the replay on that. They, they throw a screen pass and straight to that right. Shane comes back to the left to Darkin. Darkin does it mainly on his own. He does great footwork. Look at the cutback he's making there. That's some of the performance we were looking for today when we opened up. Second and three for the Gophers. Again, Darkins moves out of the backfield. We expect the Gophers to throw a lot today. Flags are thrown. Looks like Matt Ream, tight end on the left side, jumped a little early. Yeah, it looks like he flinched. Again, there are no backs in the backfield. That puts a lot of pressure on the offensive line, but they've responded really well this year. Last, uh, last week, didn't give up any sack against one of the better defenses in the country. Gophers first drive got inside the 10 but then they were stopped short of the goal line now a quick turnover another chance to put points up on the board in the first penalty will move the ball back to the 18 yard line they've got to get some points out of this though hopefully seven shade delivered complete 
to the four-yard line. Aaron Osterman with a leaping grab for the Gophers. And it's a Minnesota first down. That was a dynamic pass by Jeremy Day there. He really drilled that ball in there. Here you see it again. Great protection for Shade. Gives him plenty of time. Got hit late there, but he had plenty of time to get rid of the ball. Beautiful route, too. Nice turn in there. Osterman's been the go-to guy the last couple of weeks especially. Darkens hit in the backfield. A loss of a couple of yards. First man there, Trent Zenkowitz. Then they tried to run darkness from the left side. Uh, they had great penetration by the Michigan defense here, and uh, darkness really didn't have anywhere to go. You've got to cut off that back side. That was the key right there. Yeah, he definitely didn't have anywhere to go there at all. Hanging in motion on second and goal. Shade keeps again to the corner. Incomplete. Pass intended for Paul Cradiville. Shade would like that one back. Put a little bit too much on it. Cradiville was so wide open that he stopped running there, but he didn't have a lot of room to keep running in the back of the end zone. Right, he was kind of waving to him back there. He was waving to him that he was open. Shade just threw it a little bit over his head, but it's always best over than rather under. Great protection again. They're waiting on the ball. Deion Johnson, the defensive back between the quarterback and the receiver, and Shade tried to lob it over the top that misfired. Third and goal. Again to the corner. And oh, he took that ball. Incomplete is the ruling. Woodrow Hankins with the defensive coverage for Michigan, and the Gopher kick team comes out of the field again. It looked like Shade was forcing it here a bit. I'm not sure if there was anything there, even early. But he was he, he was looking to that corner right away and went for it. Nice try, though. Very close. close to that a touchdown grab. Remember, he's just got to get one foot down. That looked like a Minnesota touchdown. It sure did. Schalberg, this time from the middle of the field, puts it through, and the Gophers get the first points of the football game. Michigan's defense has been on the field for every play but one so far. Like a touch. Seems like a toes in there. Half is put in and half out. Very, very that's got to be a touch. The Gophers are trying to use this as a motivational tool. They're trying to get angry at something. Was Aaron Osterman in? They want Aaron Osterman in the offense to believe he was. They want him to believe it's us against this. On the Michigan sideline, this is different. And I'll tell you why, because they're wondering what's going on. They've lost three home games. Minnesota has moved the ball at will, and their defensive coaches have spared no one's feelings in their sideline pep talks over here. They are very concerned about what Minnesota is doing and concerned about some new wrinkles that they were not expecting from their scouting report. Dick? All right, thanks, Mike. Some people have said that Michigan has not recovered as a team since their home loss against Colorado in the last play of the game. They're constantly talking about coming out here without emotion. And I think that's, uh, that might be a, a, a search, searching for some kind of reason by the coaches. That when, when they're talking about emotion, you can only have emotion for so long. Then you got to go out there and you're going to have to kick some butt or get your butt kicked. And I think that the problem is they just have not been playing well, whether you play with emotion or not. You're just, Hey, playing with emotion is going to carry you through every game. Well, Keith, a lot of times, too, they're the kind of team that came out probably looking to go undefeated or probably not looking for that loss until the end of the season. And by it happening at the beginning of the season, I think it kind of threw them off balance a little bit. And then with Wheatley's injury, too, and Collins was hurt there a little bit for a while. And I think between all those factors, it kind of just has them uh, dismembered there for a minute. Well, especially with the, the, the way they lost against Colorado on the last play of the game, a 65-yard pass, and uh, nobody was, was expecting it. The other home losses to Penn State and Wisconsin. The Badgers came here to beat Michigan the week after the Gophers beat Wisconsin. Garrison Harmon kicks it away. This is Mercury Hayes from the eighth. Hayes 
filled as it gets to the 30-yard line. Raphael Cooper with the tackle for Minnesota. Todd Collins having an outstanding year for the Michigan Wolverines, running their offense, throwing at a 67% rate. And he'll hope that Michigan's second possession is a little bit longer than their first. Again, Dick, just like you were saying, this Todd Collins, uh, again, we're coming against a quarterback that has a high efficiency rating, and he's a great quarterback. He's been doing, doing it all. Uh, uh, MVP of the Rose Bowl in 93, uh, MVP of the Hall of Fame Bowl in 94. So he's been well qualified to get in the big game. Collins throws across the middle, the pass falling incomplete at the Minnesota 45, the pass intended for Amani Toomer, although Toomer, I'm not sure, ever saw the football. Take a look at the ball handlers for the Wolverines. Shea Foster, the fullback, although Ed Davis will see some time there. As usual, a big line for Michigan, but uh, a relatively inexperienced line. The line has given up some sacks. Collins is getting bumped around a little bit. On the reverse, this is Mercury Hayes. Craig Sauer back at the 20-yard line. A loss of 11 yards. Oh, it's a super job by Sauer. They had contained. They, they, it looked like they were expecting a reverse on that play because they were, they had it contained, but Sauer made an exceptional play running it down. That's just a great individual effort by Sauer. Ken Collins tried to get an angle on him. He missed the block on him and let Sauer go in there and he shot right in there and got him. They have two outstanding receivers. Uh, just to hear their names, you know they can run. A Manny Toomer and Mercury Hayes. Well, that, just, that sounds like sounds speed. Sounds like speed. Yeah. They may need some speed here on third and 20. Flags are thrown. Cross the middle. Hayes has it at the 40. A Michigan first down out near midfield, but we'll check the flag. It's thrown back to the 22-yard line. Juan Hunter finally pinned down Mercury Hayes, but this one may come back. From where that flag came, it looked like it was either offensive, defensive, pass interference. It was offensive, it looked like. It's against, it's against Michigan. The ineligible man downfield is the call. Against like I said, <laughs> you can tell I was a lineman. I didn't have a clue what they were doing back out there. <laughs> you saw a flag, you just walked backwards yeah, right. all the time, right? <laughs> I was always worried they caught me that time. See those linemen, they come up with so many tricks. You just have to watch them. I mean, you just got to keep your eyes on them. Gophers were throwing the ball to the outside of the football field. The Wolverines are throwing it right down the middle. Well, we just spoke of that Mercury Hayes, and there he is. Uh, you don't want these guys to get loose and get their momentum going uh, because both of them have great speed. Five-yard mark off takes it back to the 16, third and 25. Collins, plenty of time. Throw complete. Todd Richards makes the grab and takes it near midfield. One Hunter finally tackled Todd Richards, but not until a big pickup of 34 yards. Yes, he's going back here. Todd Collins goes back. He's really sitting in there and has great confidence in his pass. As I said, he has a great accuracy and a great efficiency rating. He threw this right over top of the Minnesota defender. Great. Great play there. Got him out of a deep hole. On the draw to Wheatley. Hit in the backfield. He muscles his way across the line of scrimmage into Minnesota territory. Here's the Minnesota defensive alignment. Linebacking crew will see an awful lot of Ben Langford in that middle linebacking spot. And the go for secondary. Kevin Holmes made the tackle for Minnesota on Tyrone Wheatley's carry into Minnesota territory. It'll be second down at seven. Collins at 6'5 has a great view of the field, too, and I think Minnesota's going to have to put a little red dogging, a little pressure on him back there. They can't let him stand back there as great a passer as he is and just take his time and pick and choose. Another three-yard carry for Wheatley. Justin Kazemius with the tackle for Minnesota. They're giving a ball to Wheatley trying to get him going, but the defense uh, seems to be keying on him pretty well. And they're not allowing any cutback. The, the, the uh, offensive linemen from Michigan are trying to get some position, but they're driving their, them right into the, the uh, into the running back. Yeah, the pursuit's been great here so far, Keith. 
Third down and four for the Wolverines. Hayes wide open. And a Michigan first down to the Minnesota 30. Juan Hunter again making the tackle for Minnesota. Collins has had all sorts of time so far here in this first quarter, and the receivers have been wide open. Yeah, the Gophers are going to have to start putting some pressure on them. Last week they were putting pressure on Illinois by blitzing both both uh, safeties. We're probably going to see that before the day is done here because he's he's got way too much time, especially with the quality receivers he has. And he does, and then, as you pointed out earlier, uh, his passing efficiency, you just can't let him stand there and have that much time. Collins going deep across the middle. Nobody there except Crawford Jordan and Rodney Heath. Some pass pressure that time on Collins for yep. the first time. They brought Langford, the middle linebacker. They blitzed him that time. They're gonna have to break they're gonna have to blitz somebody to get some pressure on Collins. They have to keep pressure on him all day. Uh, number uh, nine also slipped out there. Check the top of your screen. You'll see Davis and Langford also combining to hit Collins. Oh, they put their old sandwich hit on him that time. He, he suffered a hit pointer against Wisconsin. If they can uh, pound on that a little bit, that'll affect his, affect his uh, passing. Second and 10. Wheatley. Hit at the ankles by Langford. He wouldn't let go. A loss of three yards as Ben Langford sliced into the backfield. On this play, Langford did not wait to run along the line of scrimmage trying to get position on, on Wheatley. He shot the gap when he saw it, and that's going to be the key. Beautiful job by Langford. You want a, run, a linebacker that can run with those guys, but also take the gap when he has an opportunity. That's right, and that's what they have to do today, Keith. I think they, like they did on Johnny Johnson from Illinois, they have to keep pressure on Todd. They can't let him just stand there. He's, he's too good a quarterback to just let him stand there and kick and shoot. Collins gets hit again, delivers on target to Mercury Hayes at the 11-yard line. Another Michigan first down on another third and long conversion. That third and long has been the, been the detriment of the Gophers here so far. Jenkins, the left tackle for Michigan, is having a little trouble with Jerome Davis. You can see Jerome getting a late hit here. If you can, or get, he got there late. If he can uh, keep getting that pressure on Collins, bump him around a little bit. That's what happened to him against Wisconsin. Turned the ball over twice. He actually lost his footing there, he, just as he was trying to cut that footing uh, opponent that you talked about earlier. Just over five minutes to play in the first quarter. Here is Wheatley on the fake reverse. And he's hit again in the backfield. Falls forward across the pin. Now a late flag. Greg Sauer and Justin Kazemius hit on the tackle for Minnesota. But let's check the flag and see what this flag is all about. Looked like Langford was pushing in a shoving match with one of the uh, face masks. Face mask is the call against Minnesota. That'll take it inside the five. <laughs> There Wheatley's going over. They fake the reverse that time. Yep, yep there it is right there. Kazemius had, uh, had a hold of the man. Terrence Blaine also helping out on the tackle for Minnesota, but now the Wolverines are threatening to take the lead with 4.47 left in the first quarter. Shea Foster in at the fullback spot. Movement along the line and another flag. In fact, many flags are thrown. I don't know if the Michigan... They had motion there, but I know the Gophers definitely jumped. Seemed like they might have been offside. I don't know. Maybe the referees are trying to determine who which was which on this one. This one will go north, I believe. Nope. It'll go south against Minnesota. Minnesota Goal line leading. defense is coming in here. Minnesota leading three to nothing, but that lead very much in peril. Foster the fullback. Wheatley the tailback. Wheatley. Touchdown, Michigan. He 
is now number one in Michigan history in scoring. He just passed kicker Mike Gillette to take over the point leadership in Michigan history and an injured Michigan player down on the field at the goal line. Are you absolutely right? As we indicated at the top of the program, here's Tyrone Wheatley. He just has five yards to go here. He just plunges in there. It's hard to stop the band of his caliber for that short of running. Uh, he is actually up for the rushing total offense, scoring records. He, he has about three or four records that are in sight at any time. Center Rod. Slow and getting up, but it looks as if he's going to be okay. It looked like Payne and Runyon, the left guard, got pretty good push on Ed Hawthorne that time. You've got to stand your ground as a defensive lineman and not get that push. Jay Reimersma will hold for Remy Hamilton. Hamilton, a pretty good year kicking for Michigan, although he has missed a couple of extra points. He is 20 for 22 in extra points. Up and good, and the Wolverines now lead it seven to three. Pick up his fourth win. You really don't want to take a step backward in your rebuilding process. The Gophers won four games last year. Pretty impressive drive for Michigan, considering they converted on a third and 13 and a third and 25 deeper in their own territory. Another short kickoff, this time taken by Early. Right up the middle of the field. Rashad early to the 37 yard line a touchdown saving tackle for Remy Hamilton the kicker after what happened late last week against Illinois you can understand why teams might want to kick away from Rashad early yes they were trying to kick away from here here Rashad takes the kickoff it's kind of a short kickoff and he almost sees he sees a gap here and there's only about one man that's in all his way there yard line and if he could have got away from him he might have broken it all the way uh, he just I just find ways to get the ball in his hands more often uh, he's just an exciting player to me and when talent like that you just have to see that he gets the ball in his hands as often as possible move to defense for this year because of his speed darkens on the delay tries to find some room along the right Darkin. side got back to the line of scrimmage and that's about it. Jason Horn by Iron strung it out and stayed with Chris Darkins. Chris Darkins it looks like he's not getting going real quick. I'm not sure if the footing is down there is questionable. Okay, but, uh, he looked like he might have had something outside but hesitated a bit. It seemed like he started to go outside. You're right, Keith. He started to go out there. He said, no, I better go back in. I don't think he thought he could outrun him on that particular instance like he did on that previous play. Second and ten. Atwell in motion behind Shade. Go to the sideline. Osterman again with the grab. Pickup of six yards. For he was covered by Ty Law. Osterman with one of the more spectacular touchdown catches of the year last week, despite playing with a injured wrist. He's finally got the cast, the soft cast off that wrist, but it, uh, it takes time. Yeah, it's generally a little more tender when you take the cast off than when it's on there. We'll see how the Gophers do on a third down situation. Third and five. Made with time, dumps it across the middle. Rio spins across the 45 and is very close to a Minnesota first down. Deion Johnson. Deion Johnson to keep on him the from stop. getting to the 47 yard line, and they'll spot him a little bit short, it looks like. Rio thought about going to the sideline there and lose a little uh, little yardage to uh, outrun the guy, but then thought better of it and turned it upfield. Now fourth down, less He's than a yard. Short. He is short, and apparently the Gophers are going to go for it. Wow. Two and a half minutes left in the first quarter, and Jim Wacker going for broke here. Yes, he is. This is taking a great chance at this early part of the game here, but uh, hopefully it's successful. Fourth and one. Darkens gets the first down and falls oh, across the field into Michigan Darkins. territory. Well, now I can say I like that call. <laughs> I was <laughs> pretty quiet before. <laughs> I sure was. That was uh, that was daring. That took a lot of guts uh, at this point of the game, and having to give him a great, great field position. 
Nice blocking here. It looked like there wasn't anything inside, but a beautiful block. Who was that? Was that Cranville. That was Cranville, the tight end. Nice job. Tangan had a nice, uh, nice drive on his guy, too. Third Minnesota possession into Michigan territory. Play action fake. Dumped out to Darkens, and he's got room to run. Across the 30, out to the 28-yard line, shoved out of bounds by Clarence Thomas, uh, Thompson. And another go for first down. I like the design of that play. They had the trip formation. All three receivers lined up to the right. Brought one of them in motion and then just faked the handoff to Darkens and popped it right back to him right after he gets through the line of scrimmage. I don't think they're going to allow him to get through that clean next time. What they did, Keith, they added a little wrinkle to the, to the uh, formation that they did last week. Yep. And uh, in addition, put Darkens out there, which was a great move. I think you got uh, to find ways to get him out in the open and get him that ball the same way. And now Tim Shea calls a timeout. With 2.06 left in the first quarter, the second Minnesota timeout. And so have the sunglasses. <laughs> this is the final home game of the year for the Michigan Wolverines. They are this afternoon going to break their own NCAA regular season attendance mark. It is quite an atmosphere here in this stadium. Nick, did they put in the uh, attendance figures yet? Uh, they only needed 102,000, didn't they, uh, to break it? They're expecting 105 here this afternoon. Play action bank for the Gophers. Tim Shea deep across the middle for Osterman. Incomplete. He was bumped at the goal line, and he's claiming interference, and he will not get the fly. That was awful close there. Uh, Osterman made a fantastic dive for the ball, but he seemed like he might have been hit a little before it got there. You know, there were several offensive linemen that were looking at it that were upset. Here Tim Shea goes back. He gives a nice fake to Darkens. Sets up. And lays it out there beautifully. Oh, I don't know. He, he may have been there a little early uh, on the defender's part, but uh, nevertheless, it's second down, 10 yards to go. Darkens. Finds very little running room. Got to the 25-yard line. He was hit by Steve Morrison. Pick up of just a couple of yards. The yards figure to be tough to come by, even though this is a Michigan defense that, with another score of any kind, field goal, touchdown for the rest of the year, they will be the most scored upon Michigan defense in over 100 years of college football. Well, that's quite an impressive record. Quite a record. A dubious record at that. We'll see how the Gophers fare here on third and eight. The Gophers might as well go ahead to it. Shane wrapped up in a blitz. Fumbles the football at the 30-yard line, and the Wolverines have it. The turnover's tied at one apiece, a costly one as the Gophers Give it up in Michigan territory. They flipped from the outside that time. No backs in the backfield. It's really nobody to account for that guy on the outside. The, op the offensive lineman, uh, it looks like they had a little trouble with the snap there too, but the offensive lineman can adjust for guys coming up the middle. But when a guy comes on the outside like that, there's nobody there. That's the quarterback guy. He's got to know he's coming and get rid of the ball or, or take the hit. Again, Shade had trouble with his footing. There again, Keith, too, and I think that footing is going to be a factor. I saw various uh, uh, elements of it today. Rodney Heath, the last man there, and he knocked him down at midfield. Wheatley had run on 20 yards before a gopher touched him. And that was a good tackle by Heath. That, uh, that was open field. That's, uh, that's tough when you're the last guy. You've got to make that tackle. It was fortunately, he had him pinned to the sideline there, and Wheatley just didn't have anywhere else to go. You couldn't see it in the uh, replay here real good, but uh, Ed Hawthorne had some trouble with his footing again, and they got a big push on him. The uh, defensive linemen are having some trouble with their footing there. He collapsed on his right arm, and he leaves the ball game with an injury. Colin wobbles one across. But it's still caught by Amani Tumor. Tumor 
to the 26-yard line. That pass looked more like a punt. Juan Hunter with the tackle for Minnesota. Not a good throw, but again, there wasn't anybody within five yards of Amani Toomer. He's still getting too much time back there. Uh, Collins is getting the time to stand there, and he's going to do that all day if the Gophers don't put a little more uh, pressure on him. He's standing there, has plenty of time. He stands back and throws a wobbler to Toomey. Toomer, the top Michigan receiver, both in terms of catches and touchdowns. Tyrone Wheatley. And they snow him under the 28 yard line. Fitzemius, Sauer, and Trevor Walker strung it out along the left defensive side for Minnesota. Again, on this play, Wheatley had a little trouble with the footing, too, and the offensive linemen are. They brought a tight end in motion. It looked like he was going forward before the snap. That's uh, that's not legal. That's the end of the first quarter. Seven to three, the Wolverines in front from Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. Wolverines have it, second and 12. Collins again with all kinds of time, nearly picked off by Craig Sauer. If he held on, he'd have put the Gophers in front. He had clear sailing along the left sideline. Sauer was breaking on that ball, and he was planning on going to the end zone. He wasn't stopping after he caught it. Sauer smelled this out right away and got a break on the ball even before the oh look at that even before the uh, quarterback was getting ready to throw the ball. He knew it was coming there. That's intended for Shane Foster. Third and 13. Foster the only running back. Across the middle. Picked off at the 10-yard line. Crawford Jordan intercepts. Todd Collins now they... The Gophers have picked up the second turnover from the Michigan offense. Looks like Cockrell got a hit on Collins right as he was letting the ball go. That's been a concern. He's been getting beat up a little bit in the last few weeks. They need to rush him. They need to rush him even a little more. Outstanding work by Cockrell there. But it does make a difference. You saw him drop back and flinch even as he threw it there, Keith. They got to keep more pressure on him. He's too good of a passer just to let him stand back there. And it's 6-5. You can see it all day. Wolverine's defense wasn't even on the field. The Gophers had a chance for a quick snap. Shane throws to the sideline. Osterman spins away at the 15, out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Woodrow Hankin. I don't know where the Gopher, where the, the uh, Michigan defense oh. was. They were still on the sidelines. They you wonder been. why. You wonder why Shade didn't get up there and snap the ball. But you, you've got to still not rush things and uh, uh, I'm not sure if he could have done anything different here maybe get it going right now but uh, that that is uh, that's amazing maybe he didn't want to run 90 yards on <laughs> a quarterback sneak second and one Darkin breaks through cuts up field at the 25 and gets to the 29 before he's caught by Chuck Winter uh, the statistics for the first quarter, the Gophers like that bottom number. Keep that Michigan offense off the field. Look at that, 14 rushing yards, just 13 for the Wolverines. And this is a Michigan offense that as often as not has not one but two running backs pick up 100 yards or more in a game. First down for Minnesota. This drive, this possession started at the Minnesota 10. Shade flips it out. And a very short gain to the 32-yard line. Catch made by the tight end. Hangin. Hangin with a rare grab. Just seeing Michigan's defense still on the sideline when the uh, Gophers are lined up ready for a play shows the disarray that they're in right now. The Gophers have got to take advantage of it. Minnesota really does have them on the ropes a little bit, and uh, they're right, Keith, if they take advantage of it. They missed two good chances in the first quarter there, but they can't let those opportunities go. 
Kang at the first catch of the year, the third for a tight end this season. Green left, Darkins has it. And he's got a Minnesota first down. And Darkins can all the okay. way. Chris Darkins with a Minnesota touchdown. That will certainly help to deal to break that record right there, Dick. His second touchdown through the air. And Chris Darkins puts the Gophers in front nine to seven. A 67 yard touchdown pass. Beautiful job here. They set up a quick screen, got the ball off to Chris Darkins. He had some nice blocking, but a lot of it was on his own after he got about 10 yards deep. You can, you can see Thome, Thome attempting a block there, but then Chris just outran everybody. Schalberg's extra point attempt hits the upright and is no good. A tough afternoon for Mike Schalberg. A missed 25-yard attempt and now an extra point hitting the upright, but the Gophers lead it early in the second quarter. Score. Here's a missed extra point by Schalberg. Well, it doesn't look like he slipped that time. We saw him in pregame warm-ups, and he fell down a couple times trying to make some long field goals there. He might be thinking about that, though, thinking about the footing out there, and that uh, that'll uh, that can disrupt a a kicker. That's a Smith. Smith on the near side has returned one back all the way for a touchdown. For over 100,000 people in the stadium, they're pretty quiet. So I think they're thinking, here we go again. They want all three losses here to have been at home this year. Harmon's kick, taken at the 10 by Hayes. Hayes across the 30 to the 33-yard line before Rafael Cooper again makes the play on the special teams for Minnesota. And with a first name like Mercury, you better be able to run. <laughs> They just sound like they can run. They can, too. Never uh, have offensive linemen named Mercury, do they? They're all <laughs> running back. Wide receivers. Uh, you look for offensive linemen named Thor or something like that. That'll work. <laughs> Hayes has already had a big afternoon early in the second quarter. A number of big catches. Collins with the pitch to Wheatley. He just strings it out. Jerome Davis finishes him off. Continuous did a great job pursuing into the backfield and taking out the blocking in front of Tyrone Wheatley. Great job by the Gopher defensive linemen, too. They strung that play out. They weren't give, giving him any room to cut back. I'm sure Wheatley would have liked to have cut back here, but you can see Hawthorne and Cockrell, they're all stringing it out. Good job by Consenius there, too. He was looking for a place to cut, but he, they just didn't give him anywhere. They played a few. Everyone kept their lanes and uh, stayed right in there. Second and ten for the Wolverines. Collins looking deep. Wrapped up back at the 25-yard line. Cockrell was the first man there. Finished off by Ogan Akbar. And Collins has been stuck a couple of times here in this first half. It looked like Collins was going to get rid of that ball and pulled it back at the last minute. He took two good hits there. He wasn't quite sure there, Keith. You're right. I, I, was, I thought it'd be through it. He wasn't sure of it, and it could have been that kind of would have been an interception. Here he starts to cock, he pulls it back, and by that time the Minnesota was on him. Akbar really flattened it. Yeah, they had a game inside that time, and Akbar came up up the middle. Nice job. Cockrell got a nice hit on there too. Third and 20. Wolverines have converted a couple of big third down plays already. Collins spilled at the 18-yard line. Akbar again in on the tackle, and I think Cockrell was the first man there as well, or was it Jerome Davis? Beautiful pressure by the Gopher defensive lineman. They're making some penetration and getting the hits on the quarterback. Great job that time. That's what they've had to do, and they're doing their, it's like the old Minnesota defense here now. When is the last time the Gophers have had back-to-back -back sacks on successive plays? It's not big on Ed Hawthorne battle in there. Gophers almost blocked the kick. I think he's from the 44, slips, and gets out to the 46-yard line. Craig Baker, the punter for Michigan, averaging just under 36 yards a kick. 
You saw Rodney slip again there. That yep. that field is pretty slick. It's going to be it's going to be the team that can handle the slump uh, the best today. This is comes out on top. This is Minnesota's second game on natural turf. They played on the prescription turf in West Lafayette, Indiana, in their loss to Purdue. You would think that might be a dis disadvantage, but the Gophers practice on grass plenty of times too. And it's not like these kids have never played on a slick surface. A lot of great football coming your way this fall, yet on MSC. Big East football starting your show. Now the Gophers with the lead. And Tim Shane with a good afternoon. Most of those impressive numbers coming on a 67-yard pass, screen pass to Chris Darkin. Now Darkin with a carry. Short gain and a big shove out of bounds. Three Wolverines, including Ty Law, pushed Darkens out of bounds. Mike Max, what have you got? Well, the Gophers have made an adjustment, and it has to do with the turf. Several cleats came out of the locker room. They've replaced what they came out with to start the game with a longer cleat to get better footing. If you think Minnesota fans are tough, the Michigan fans have already requested once that Tyrone Wheatley come out of the game. And after Chris Darkens scored, they suggested no uncertain terms to Gary Moeller, that he might want to try his second team defense. Dick. <laughs> Rolls and flips to Rios. Rios has a go for first down across the Michigan 40 to the 38. Finally brought down by Chuck Winters. And again, to put this in perspective, the Gophers have nine points up on the board. No Michigan defense has ever allowed more points than this 1994 version. Here's that go. You see a misdirection play. He bootlegs back to the right. Those are the Rios. Rios makes a great gain on this play here. Nicely designed play, though. It was. I like those guys. Yeah, those are my kind of plays there. First and ten. Gophers. See if they add another wrinkle to, the, to that formation here. Keith. Draw play off of it. Darkens has room. Cuts inside at the 35, down to the 32 yard line. A pickup of six. Maybe seven yards before Deion Johnson knocked him down. The Gophers are winning the battle of the line of scrimmage, and there aren't many times when you play Michigan that you can say that. Exactly right, Keith. They are. That offensive line is pushing off there, and they've done it from the first quarter on. They push right off. There's Bob DeBess. Everyone on the Gopher coaching staff hoping for a good effort from the Gophers this afternoon after the disheartening loss last Saturday. Darkin moves out of the backfield. Go across the middle, almost caught, almost intercepted. Hagan dropped it at the 30-yard line, and the ball fell right into the arms of Clarence Thompson. It looks like he might have been disrupted by the uh, by the umpire standing back there. The Tang comes across the middle, and it looks like the umpire might have gotten in the way of the pass or of yeah, there it is right there. It looks like he might have been disturbed. He should have ran the guy over. And the fish was fair game back there. <laughs> fair game. If he's in the way, he gets run over. Gophers might be in four down territory here. They would be on the outer fringes of Chalbert's field goal range under the best of conditions, and they got a pretty good breeze. Here are four down territory right now. That's right. Shea, deep sideline, wide open, Dostum at the 10. Gopher touchdown. Aaron Osterman taking it in for a Gopher touchdown, and this crowd. Oh, they've taken this trip. The Minnesota team is really working on the on the spectators here. They're calling for booze. It's been a long time since you've heard the Michigan crowd here boo. Here Shea goes back. He holds his poise in the pocket. Lays it up there beautifully. The defender oh, fell Osterman. down. Again, the footing was the big problem there. Osterman saw the footing and just took his time and walked into the end zone. Deion Johnson fell down. He was the man assigned to Aaron Osterman. And uh, the slip occurred as the ball was in the air. Osterman just stood at the tent, grabbed it, and took it in. And the Gophers will try to make up for the missed extra point and go for the two-point conversion. Javon Jackson is the running back behind Tim Jay. I don't know. I don't remember. Shea throws incomplete in the end zone, and the Gopher two-point try is no good. The pass intended for Chuck Rios. An extra point would have put 
The Gophers up by two scores, at least, as it is. Michigan can tie, and with a touchdown and a two-point conversion of their own. Perhaps an upset. Some rest among the 105,000 here at Michigan Stadium. Well, that's the best way to keep the crowd out of the game uh, anytime you're an away team. Uh, away game, I mean, they're dick, because the one thing you have to let, can't let them get their momentum going early. Hayes and Smith are back to receive Harmon's kickoff. A low, wobbly kick that goes out of bounds. Both special teams, both return teams, have threatened to break a return for a touchdown, and perhaps for that reason, Garrison Harmon tried to kick it away from Mercury Hayes. The Wolverines will not win a national championship as you see Jason Farr, the backup quarterback, warming up. Will be at the 35 yard line. Collins will take the field here now. The loss to Colorado in the last play of the game. Tough loss here against the Penn State Nittany Lions, and then the most disheartening loss it was the one against. The Wisconsin Badgers. With car warming up, though, you have to wonder if Collins might be hurting. Wolverine starts from the 35-yard line. Wheatley met in the backfield. He worked through the line of scrimmage out to the 39-yard line. That's a testament to his running ability. There was no hole there at all. Gopher defense is really getting some penetration that time. It looked like Langford got into the backfield before the, the uh, handoff was even in Wheatley's hand. Gave him a generous spot there too, but that was due to all the Tyrone's uh, uh, own own uh, effort there. The Gopher defense has played its best against the better running backs this year. Wisconsin series of running backs that they can put on the field. Alex Smith of Indiana. Gophers have stifled some pretty good running backs this year. This may be the best running back they face this year. Tyrone Wheatley takes it out to midfield for a Michigan first down. Robert Jordan finally pinned down Tyrone Wheatley. There goes Wheatley on a draw play. Goes right up the middle. He had a gaping hole there. And uh, he was tackled by punishing by Consumius. Great package. Great power, speed. And the guy that Joe Paterno says has the best stiff arm in college football in many, many years. We haven't seen it yet here this afternoon. First and ten Wolverines from near midfield. Collins is forced to run with the football and he gets back to the line of scrimmage and that's it. Trevor Walker stayed with him. Gophers had four down linemen. I'm not sure if one of the linebackers jumped down in the three-point stands, but Langford moved him over and they were in a 4-3 defense that time. They'll give Collins a gain of a yard. Wheatley out of the ball game right now. And he's drawing some medical attention along the sideline. We're told that it's a hand injury of some sort. Tim Biakabatuka is the tailback, replacing Tyrone Wheatley. Collins with time. Throws across the middle. Nearly intercepted by Terrence Blaine. Blaine tried to stop and make the interception, but he slipped and nearly caught the ball lying on his back. Collins is looking a little shaky back there, like he's not sure what uh, which receiver to go to, but that has a lot to do with the Gopher defense right now. They are covering their receivers tight. Certainly much better than they did in the first quarter. That's right. Wheatley apparently cutting his right hand. Quickly patched up, ready to come back in, but Bianca Batuka is still in there. Third and nine, Collins again across the middle, complete to Jay Reimersma, and he is held short of a Michigan first down. Reimersma, the former Michigan backup quarterback, switched to tight end. He's beefed up quite a bit, and he's been a pretty reliable receiver, but this time he comes up a couple yards short. Terrence Blaine pinned him down at the 43. Interesting to see if they'll go for this uh, fourth down here or if they'll punt it. 
Clock running, 7.20 left in the half, and the Wolverines want to talk about it. And I don't blame them. The Gophers are leading by eight points. Their first pick it away, and the ball goes into the end zone. A 43-yard kick, but not a good one for Craig Baker, and now he's hearing some of the boos. This game has followed a similar script to the Indiana game several weeks ago, when the Gophers were clearly the better team in the first half, at least, and seemed to have to everything going their way, yet their lead was not large enough at halftime. I, I, I'd like to compare it more to the Wisconsin game, okay. which is one they pulled out. It's, uh, it's going in that direction a lot, too. Well, if they have to keep the same intensity up, though, the same intensity that they played against Wisconsin, they have to keep it for 60 minutes, though. Yeah, that's been the problem for Minnesota. They've been a pretty good first-half football team with a couple of glaring exceptions. This is Darkens. And he gets it out to the 24, maybe the 25-yard line. Steve Morrison, one of several Wisconsin or, uh, Michigan uh, players, along with Jarrett Irons on the tackle. Been a disappointing year for the Gophers. There certainly is no question about that. The expectations weren't as high as they were for Michigan coming into the season, but Gophers have just three wins so far. The biggest one certainly their win three weeks ago against the Badgers. Second and five. Shane throws a dangerous pass into a screen that was completely filled up with Michigan football players. Third down and five coming up. That was the screen they tried and then they were successful in earlier. Uh, they tried again. Here we come with Shade dropping back. There is a bench warning he did the same against the Michigan again. bench. He tried to come back to Darkens on the left side. Darkens was covered. He didn't know just where to throw it. He hesitated. It could have came up for uh, an interception there, but. The Michigan bench has just been warned for stepping out onto the field. That would add uh, insult to injury. To penalize for creeping out onto the field in your home field. On your home field. Third down and five for the Gophers. Darkens on the draw. Has a first down. Out to the 37 yard line. Clock running. Six. Well, clock stopped now because of the first down, but 624 left in the half. Clarence Thompson finally knocked Darkens down. Beautiful, beautiful job again by the Gopher offensive line. They've been pass protecting real well all day. That gets the frustration level up in the uh, defensive line, and they're there trying to get past, past them, and they uh, run a quick draw underneath them. Gophers would love to eat up as much time as they could here and perhaps add some points. Wolverines shift along the defensive front. Darkens hit in the backfield and knocked down for a loss of a couple. The first man there, the guy who really messed up the play, was Brent Blackwell. Seemed like they shifted right out. They were expecting that. That time, Dick, uh, we'll see on the replay here. Darkens really didn't have anywhere too much to go that time either. Great penetration there. You can see Blackwell got a hand on Darkens and Partially spun him around. Darkens will come out now on second and 12. As the Gophers flood the field with wide receivers. Shade throws it across to Cooper. He's got it. Slips and falls at the 41-yard line. Partially knocked down by Michigan's William Carr. I think that's tough for a guy like Cooper to come in when he hasn't been in a lot all day and uh, try to adjust to the slick turf. You can see here, it, he he, uh, he picks the ball up, but then slips as he's trying to maneuver inside there against one of the big defensive linemen that fell off. You can't do your normal cutting on that slippery surface, and it makes it difficult. William Carr, six feet tall, 285 pounds, and they dropped him back and made a linebacker out of him. Jay. Looks for the cross the middle. Too hard for Rios. A little bit behind him. Looks like he might have had some room to run for a first down. Instead, it'll be fourth down. And with 441 left, the Gophers will have to kick it away. Rios and Cooper were crossing that time. Right across, right about three yards deep into the uh, Michigan backfield. It looked like uh, Shade could have gone to either one of them. 
but he chose to go to Rios. Put a little bit too much on the ball, though. Mike Kimball had a great week kicking last week. His first punt here, not a good one. He gets a favorable bounce to the 31-yard line. Kimball, uh, an unsung hero, if you will, last week in a losing effort against Illinois, but that first punt did not come off his foot very well. MSC is your sports connection this winter. The Minnesota Moose will wander into the upper Midwest tomorrow night as they take on Cincinnati. MSC, the exclusive home of Golden Gopher Hockey. Next Friday and Saturday, the number one ranking will be... From the 31, first and 10 for the Wolverines. Collins still in a quarterback. He's taking a couple of hits. Thrown almost picked off by Sauer, and again, there was nobody between Craig Sauer and the goal line. Sauer has done that twice today. Uh, he's all over that ball, though. He's really getting a fix on, on uh, Collins. He must be reading him. Collins is not looking his receivers off, and he's right on top of it. Sauer with his second opportunity for an interception and an, a probable touchdown. There you see Collins goes back and Sauer is in perfect position. If he'd have picked that off, he could have shot it in. That's intended for Bianca Patuco. And now the officials stop play. Problem with the clock, apparently. There was a malfunction of the 25 second clock. The, clock, the, the ball will be snapped. The clock will start on the snap. Collins has got to be losing a little bit of confidence here. He almost threw two of them right into Sauer's hands. And I think he's uh, he's got to be questioning his judgment, maybe his protection and his receiver. If, his, if he's not, his head coach and about 105,000 <laughs> fans are. I think they ought to just really put a lot of pressure on him for that very reason. Now, Keith, if I, he's seems to be shaking up, put more pressure on him. Flags are thrown as Frank Sauer pins Bianca Batuco down. We've not seen Tyrone Wheatley since he left the game with a hand injury. The penalty apparently coming up against Minnesota. Offsides against Minnesota. The second or third. Offside on the defense. Five yards, previous spot, repeat, second down. Second or third a penalty against the Minnesota lineman. You've seen Langford shifting his lineman around a, a couple times now. And I think they're uh, they're having some success on the pass rush, and that makes them even more anxious to get across the line of scrimmage. Antoine Simpson penalized Minnesota player. Second and five. Yaka Matuko. Back into the line of scrimmage. That's it. Trevor Walker. Kevin Holmes. Jumping out on the tackle for Minnesota. They call him touchdown Tim. He scored two touchdowns against Minnesota last year. And Amani Toomer will also come back next year. Yaka Matuka did such a great job for the Wolverines when Tyrone Wheatley missed the first two games of the year. He's actually had a better average per rush than Wheatley. That makes it rough when you have two backs. You take someone like Tyrone Wheatley out and put him in, and he runs it with a greater average. Third and five. Collins fires across the middle. Complete. Close to a Michigan first down. Langford was right on top of Todd Richards. We'll see where they mark the ball. I think he got it. Langford made a pitch and tackle on it. But he made the first down, but he paid for it. It is a Michigan first down. 3.22 left in the first half. I like the aggressiveness of the Gopher defense here. You see in here, Langford, he doesn't stop and, and uh, try to get squared up on a guy that might break it. He takes a hit at him. That's what was so impressive about the Illinois linebackers last week. How hard they hit. Holland going deep across the middle for Toomer. Incomplete. At the 18-yard line. They tried to go deep. Parrott Blaine and Justin Convenience were back defensively for Minnesota. The crowd thought there might be interference there, but it looked like it was just overthrown. I think that was the thing where we got uh, kind of equaled up from that pass that Osterman went on at the, the, first, <laughs> the, the first time because that looked a little close also. 
Tyrone Wheatley is back in the ball game for Michigan. The Gophers have got to keep that pressure on Collins, though. They can't let him stand around there and get his confidence back. They've, they've had him where he's kind of shaken up a little bit now, and uh, he's not quite confident as he was early. Collins brings it to the near side to Wheatley. Across midfield, a Michigan first down, and he gets out of bounds at the Minnesota 46-yard line. Ben Langford finally twisted him out of bounds. You might see the uh, Michigan offense go to some of those screens and put passes, get some confidence back in the quarterback. That takes a little bit off the rush, too. Nice easy, nice easy throw for Collins, trying to get him back into the into a rhythm again because he has been took up. Exactly, Keith. I think that's why they did that. That was a display on their part. Wolverines trying to tie it up before halftime. Less than three minutes to play. Reamers play in motion behind Collins. Gophers coming to blitz. Collins going deep to the far sideline. Hayes with the grab at the four-yard line. A penalty flag thrown back at the crowd. Hayes with the grab, and the penalty will come against Minnesota, and now Hayes is slow in getting up. He's bent over at the goal line. Well, he really stretched out there and made a dynamic catch smart, on that. Smart play here, Sandy, by the receiver. He hesitated back at about the 15-yard line That's interference. to on the keep defense. the defensive the back away declined. from the football. Right there. First right, down. Right. That's the same thing that Osterman did on that in the first quarter. That's a great play. That receiver, a smart receiver, will do that. That's 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 Ill it's legal, and you you have to do that. Oh, you can see at the end of the play there, the right uh, right tackle uh, Guinness was ripping down on uh, on uh, on Walker. Only thing that the Gophers really the only part of the game that the Gophers really haven't played well thus far. Dick. All right, thanks, Mike. It's interesting. Uh, Blue Bug has been going through the Gopher football team and. Perhaps Mike Schalberg not feeling well affected their decision to go for two on their last touchdown. That has made the Minnesota lead be within reach if the Wolverines can punch it into the end zone and convert two themselves. More movement on the line. And the Gophers think this call will go against the Wolverines. But think he must be feeling awful bad, though, because if he can't uh, kick this, the, the extra point, down there, that's the, that's the least he has to kick Dead up ball. anywhere on the field, so uh, I think starts. we need to get another kicker. Well, I mean, for today, anyway. Of all the penalties along the line of scrimmage here in this first half, this will be perhaps the biggest. It takes the ball back to the nine-yard line, and it'll be first and goal from there. Could be a good break for the Gophers there. Mercury Hayes back in the ball game for Michigan. Dick Bramer along with Keith Fonhorst, Sandy Stevens, and Mike Max. Timeout. Now again, Gary Moeller and a couple of his coaches are way about halfway out to the hash mark discussing something with the official. And you can see Mercury Hayes back in the ball game. And uh, some disharmony along the <laughs> Michigan sideline here in this first half but the Wolverines are threatening to tie it up with 223 left. Wheatley the tailback. Foster the fullback. First and goal from the nine. Wheatley gets the call and he's met by Trevor Walker at the 11-yard line. The Gophers have been swallowing up Tyrone Wheatley for most of this first half. Trevor Walker has been playing that way all year. Jim Wacker pointed out this this uh, week at the press conference that Trevor Walker, for not playing hardly any uh, ball until this year, has just had a fantastic year. Great individual effort by Walker, who cut into the middle, fought off a black uh, block, and cut back outside to nail Tyrone Wheatley. Second and goal from the ten. Holland throws incomplete. Pass intended for Ed Davis. He came out of the backfield. Davis was the starter last year for Michigan when Tyrone Wheatley missed some time because of an injury. This year, the starter was Tim Biakabatuka. Tyrone Wheatley. 
Stokely along the sideline on this third and goal. You have to wonder if his hand is bothering him or uh, maybe his production is bothering Morris. Well, that Minnesota defense is really the reason for it. They haven't given up anything to any runner that much in the last three or four games. Gophers come on the blitz, and Collins is wrapped up at the 19-yard line. Dan Lasanti, the linebacker, coming up untouched to sack Collins, the third Minnesota sack of this first half. Oh, that was the, a great play. The Michigan lineman can adjust for a sack from, uh, when a, a blitzer is coming up in, in the, mid, in the uh, middle. But when a guy comes from the outside like the Lasanti, that's, the, that's Collins, uh, man. He's got to adjust for that. The quarterback has to make those adjustments. Remy Hamilton has already kicked a school record 19 field goals this year. This from 37 yards, it's up and good. One minute left in the first half. The Wolverines get points, but only three. And the Gophers still lead by five. Super job on a quick thing off of it from time to time, but you still keep that pressure on them all day. Atmosphere here right now with a minute left in the first half. Hamilton will kick it away. We'll see how deeply he kicks it with Rashawn Early and Raphael Cooper standing inside the five. Very short kick. <laughs> Down by third, uh, at the 30 yard line. Dalen, the tight end, called for a fair catch and bumped into Watson, and they both fell over at the 30 yard line. You can call for a fair catch on a kickoff, and that's what Dalen did. Yep, that was an alert move by Dalen. You don't want to, when you have the ball popped up like that, you don't want to be waiting for it and get hit right when the ball arrives. It was. Call a fair catch. It was uh, it was too bad that he was run into from behind, but a good job by Dalen. <laughs> that saved some time, see, on the clock. That's why it was a good move. The man coming up didn't know what Dalen was doing there and slid right up under him. Chris Smith uh, returned the first kickoff uh, for about a yard. He wanted another crack at that one. <laughs> on first down, Darkin gets the call. And picks up five yards before he shoved forward by... Michigan's Glenn Steele. Well, that's slippery field. Darkens is still wherever he has pretty good footing. He's, he's not showing the wear and tear of the, the slippery field just yet. I'd like to see the Gopher offense hustle up here a little bit and at least try to get three points. Right, try to get down here where they could maybe hit a hit a big one and try to get that three point. That three points will be big for him, Keith. Second and five for Minnesota. What, what might be the last play of the half. Darkens hanging out of that football and barreling across the 40 to the 41 of Minnesota first down, which will temporarily stop the clock. 19 seconds left. Steve Morrison with the Michigan tackle. Coming up at halftime, we'll have a special feature on the guys who get the equipment here. Paul and Tom Lexham. And we'll uh, as well summarize this first half, a first half that has seen Minnesota lead by five. The Gophers will let time wind down here. And again, they'll head to the locker room at halftime, leading the football game. A lot of the marshmallows have been thrown on the field. And a very encouraging first half for the Gophers comes to an end. 15 to 10, the halftime score. We'll have our halftime show for you from Ann Arbor, Michigan, in just a moment. The Michigan Wolverines, they had a fumble and an interception. He talked about Tyrone Wheatley a couple weeks ago against Penn State at halftime. <laughs> Wacker, before the game, he saw that clip of Cal Stahl last week on the Jim Wacker show. Said, we're ahead at halftime. They're going to get the same speech. Oh Michigan came out very much business-like. The Gophers talked about playing 60 minutes. One interesting fan here, former Gopher, former Viking, Mark Deuce Bobbick now lives here. Last time he was at Michigan Stadium was the last time the Gophers beat this Michigan Wolverine team. All right, thank you, Mike. Again, the battle for the little brown jug. And the Gophers would love to get their hands on it for the first time in eight years. Garrison Harmon will kick it away. And deep to receive the kick, Mercury Hayes, who was banged up a little bit in the first half, and Seth Smith. 
Heath Von Horst, Sandy Stevens, Mike Max, and Dick Bramer with you from Michigan Stadium. The Gophers trying to pull off their second straight big road upset. This kick will go to Hayes from the seventh. And Hayes is shoved backwards as he gets to the 21-yard line. Flags are thrown, and they're going to call the Gophers for a late hit, I believe. Hardly the way you want to start the second half. May have been Raymond Baylor. And the first play of the game results in the first penalty, and it goes against Minnesota, and it may be a big one. That's a shame. You like to see a team come out at halftime all fired up, but this is one of the dangers. You get some of those guys, those crazy guys on the kickoff coverage team. And it's an a, extra hit. It's a face mask, and it's a big one. 15 yards to start the second half. And Craig Sauer pointing to his head saying, hey, come on, guys, let's think. What a disastrous way to start the second half for a team trying to pull off a big, big upset. We'll see how Todd Collins fares here in the second half. He was not sharp in the first half. Out of the eye formation, Collins will throw. And throw incomplete, the pass intended for Amani Toomer. Again, the goal for using a four-man line, but uh, offsetting him a bit, covering the center. Center, right guard, right tackle. I would like to, for them to come right out here and start just blitzing him right from the beginning. Just let him know it's going to be that kind of afternoon the rest of the second half. Collins a 50% thrower in the first half. Came into the game with the highest completion percentage for a season in school history. 67%. Gophers come on the blitz. Collins going deep, looking for Tuma. What a catch by Amani Toomer at the 26-yard line. He is their top receiver, and they've gone to him in the first two plays of the second half. They pulled out the big ones to Toomer here. Collins goes back, he drops back, and he lays it up there. Just really lays it out there, but the big thing on there, Toomer is on the outside shoulder. He makes an adjustment, goes over his far shoulder, and brings that in. That's that's picture perfect there. That's throwing and catching at its best. First and ten from the 26. Collins delivers incomplete to Toomer. Trying to get it to him at the 23-yard line. Frank Sauer and Rodney Heath were there defensively. Mercury Hayes was all alone at the 10-yard line. Collins does not look like a competent quarterback. The way, he's, even though he had a nice throw on that first one, he does not have a lot of confidence in his arm right now. You're right, Dick. I saw that same thing. I saw Mercury Hayes was down there all alone. If he'd have pumped uh, at Toomer that time and, and re recocked and reloaded that time, it would have been uh, would have been six for him. Tyrone Wheatley. Carried the ball 12 times for a three-yard average in the first half. So far in the second half, he's been nothing more than a decoy. Now he gets the call. And another gain of about three yards. Peter Heestan in on the tackle for Minnesota, as, long, as well as Consenius and Hawthorne. Wheatley, who had his right hand bandaged in the first half, now has it wrapped up pretty tightly. And again, I I really think that if the Wolverines, they certainly have so many offensive weapons, but I think they're counting on Wheatley to kind of lead them through the second half here. I think it'd be a big mistake. I don't think that uh, he's, he's going to be able to do that, uh, to run against the Gophers. Third and seven. Collins with time flips it across to Dave Foster. And the big pullback takes it across the 15 and gets the Michigan first down. Consenius had a hold of him, but could not stop him. Yeah, he had him covered, but uh, but he dragged him there. Jay the Foster is 6'2", 245, and this is a mismatch. And you see him coming out of the backfield, just short across the uh, middle. If uh, Consenius could have brought him down right there, it wouldn't have been a first down. Yeah, Zemia is giving away 30 pounds. Foster, a very solid fullback. First and 10 from the 14. 
Wheatley. Hit by Walker behind the line of scrimmage. He falls forward to the 13 for a gain of maybe a yard. Walker's doing a great job of getting penetration again. Walker's had a big day today. That's the second, uh, the second uh, big play that he's had so far. Walker played a dynamic game uh, last game also against Illinois. Second and nine on Michigan's first possession of the second half. Two tight end formation. Hayes, the lone wide receiver. Wheatley dives forward to the 11 yard line. Again, maybe two yards. The Gophers have had Michigan in good position here on these third and long situations. Third and seven, third, third and eight. You can do a lot on defense when you have those kind of situations, but they've, uh, they've let them stick it out. And the third down defense really crippled the Gophers last week against Illinois. People talk about the controversial play, but it was a, what, third and 27 or something like that that Illinois converted leading up to that eventual game-winning touchdown. Less than 12 minutes to play in the third quarter. Third and seven for the Wolverines. Collins gets to the foul, feeling the heat. And he dumps it just in time, incomplete at the six-yard line, making the defensive play for Minnesota, Jerome Davis. Good job by Davis. He got there late, but he never gave up. He was fighting through his... Here you see Davis fighting through the, on the left side, or I'm sorry, on the right side. Fought through, got to, got to the quarterback. You've got to have that continued effort. Remy Hamilton will attempt a 29-yard field goal. Up and good. Hamilton beat Notre Dame with a 42-yard field goal with just two seconds left on the clock. And he comes through with a kick here to cut the gap to two. Hamilton tapping off the drive with a 28-yard field goal, and the Gophers lead by two. Hamilton now will kick it away. I think it will say something for the Gophers if they come right back and score right back on Michigan. I think that will let them know that they, you know, still in control of the game. Another high end over end kick. Fair catch called for, and the ball instead bounces out of bounds. And the Gophers will get it at the 35-yard line. Neither the ball. kicker was touched well, by the receiving team. First down at the out-of-bounds spot. So instead of the 35, the Gophers will start near their 20-yard line. That's showing some respect for Early that they don't want to let him touch that ball and uh, be in danger of getting a return. The Gopher up man called for a fair catch and apparently Knocked it out of bounds. So the Gophers start at the 21-yard line. But you're right, neither kicker wants to kick it away to the deep men. Shade, quick step. And a pass to the far sideline, complete to Osterman, his eighth catch of this football game. Short pickup of three, four yards. Woodrow Hankins knocked him out of bounds. Gophers can't afford to have any kind of major turnover here, too. That's just the kind of thing that would change the momentum of this game, get the crowd back into the game. So they do have to be careful down here, but at the same time, bring that ball on out of this their, their end zone here and, and get on into the middle of the field. Rios in motion. And Darkin. Wiggles his way across the line out to about the 28, 29 yard line. Steele and Johnson combine on the tackle for the Wolverines. It'll be third and short. Third and short situations help, help the uh, offensive coordinator a lot because it does not allow the uh, Michigan defense to tee off on the pass because they could be running a quick draw or, or just a regular running play to Darkin. You're right, you have to respect Darkin. This is the one real Zellick comes across the middle. They're not in that formation this time, though. Darkin's hitting the backfield, fumbles the football, and the Wolverines cover it up at the 31-yard line. Steve Morrison recovered the Chris Darkin's fumble, and the Wolverines take over in great field position. 
That's just what I just mentioned a second ago. They can't have that. They have to make them earn every point they get from this point. Darkins had a crucial fumble late in the Illinois game. And right here you see on his second effort, he looks like he, he was going to be able to pick up that first down, but wasn't protecting the football. That's a shame. He seemed like he was stripped that time, though. Steve, it was a great uh, thing on the, uh, the Michigan defender that time. Jason Horn forced the fumble. Morrison recovered. Each team now with two turnovers. They've got to step in their backs now and play like football players. Wheatley breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Powers his way forward to the 26-yard line. Wheatley even seemed to run with a little more enthusiasm right there. Jerome Davis looked like he was going to get a get a, a tackle for a loss there, but uh, almost almost had the tackle for the loss. He slanted inside the left tackle here. Almost had it. Zemius finally had to drag Wheatley down after a gain of four. Wheatley again. Don't let him get going. Down to the 11 yard line. Craig Sauer finally spun him down. Here Tyrone Wheatley breaks off the uh, left side here and uh, does an outstanding run. That's the kind of run they were looking for him to do all day here. You see Collins just gives it back to him. He goes straight off the left side. Oh, there's a big, big hole there. You can run a Mack truck up through there and uh, let alone Wheatley with, the, with his steam rolling. But they're getting letting the crowd get back in this game, too. Wheatley out of the ball game. Shea Foster, the only running back on first and 10 from the 12. Foster. Hit by Kazemius at the line. He back pedals for a gain of maybe a yard. Big D has to bring it up again here and uh, try to keep this down within a field goal anyway. Gary Moeller <laughs> doesn't like what he has seen through most of this football game. He has had to fight from behind. Todd Collins is not played to his normal level so far here this afternoon. Bianca Batuco in the backfield on second and nine. And now Collins has to call a timeout. And that'll agitate the 105,000 plus here this afternoon. Timeout, one touchdown. The Gopher defense has held tough inside the red zone. They are faced now with a second and nine. Bianca Batuco stays in the game. Foster in motion. Touchdown Tim gets the handoff. He also gets a face full of Justin Kazemius. Kazemius is really playing close to the line of scrimmage and, and making some nice penetration. A couple key tackles here. Good job by Kazemius. Perfect. He was up where he could have uh, blitzed, but just played, played like the linebacker. Zimmias and Sauer have done a, uh, an outstanding job today of coming up and hitting those uh, uh, runners before they really get their momentum going. Big play here, third and seven inside the Minnesota 10. Collins looking across the middle, touchdown! Amani Tuner! His fourth touchdown catch of the season, and the Wolverines take the lead. Here we see Collins going back, uh, getting the ball from the center. He stands in there, no pressure on him. And Tuma just runs a nice post route, and he's right in front of the receiver, makes an outstanding catch. The Wolverines, leading by four, will now go for the two-point conversion. Collins will try to throw for it. And he throws for the conversion behind Hayes, but into the arms of Tumor. And the Wolverines get the first 11 points of the second half. A 
with the same play they scored the touchdown with only in mirror image from the other side. Yeah, Collins looks like he's get, getting some more confidence in his arm here. Beautiful throw. Couple of post patterns for Amani Toomer. He turns those into eight points. A deeper kickoff, and uh, Raphael Cooper fumbles it at the 20, covers it at the 25. Cooper's very fortunate there. The short kickoffs have given them problems here in this football game. Let's go down to Mike Max. Raphael Cooper, interesting. He got the ball. This is a homecoming for him. He's got 20-some fans. He graduated from high school here. He and Kevin Holmes were teammates there. 20-some people came out to see him, including their head coach. Also homecoming for Jim Wacker. He grew up here. Both his sisters are in the crowd. Keep your ear out now. They have been quiet, 100,000 plus. They are becoming the 12th man. They are getting loud, and it's going to be a factor. This is a crucial drive for the Gophers to silence them. Gophers turned it over on their first possession. They start from the 25. James goes too far for Chuck Rios. Pass intended for Rios at the 28-yard line. It falls incomplete. That play's been successful for him earlier in the game. It's a little too wide for uh, for Rios this time. Gophers have, have got to come back here now, though. Uh, they know that they couldn't sit on the 15 points, and they've got to score some more points this half themselves and, and come out and take charge of this game and take this crowd back out of it again. We have not seen much of 2-2 Atwell in this football game. Gophers now send three wide receivers to the top of your screen. Throws too far for Darkins, almost intercepted. Pass intended for Darkins. Woodrow Hankins was actually closer to the football. That was exactly the same play that they ran earlier when they faked the handoff. Handoff to Darkins, and he goes through the line of scrimmage and then gets a quick pass. That's the one that threw it a little too long, though. Yeah, that's the one I'd indicated earlier that the uh, Shaders has been having trouble all year. The short one, he just, just the touch, and that's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tougher pass than it looks to throw, but he's had problems with that all year. Why is Chris Darkin such a difficult target to throw to? We have seen some of the worst throws from the Minnesota quarterback with Darkin's the intended receiver. Well, Dick has generally been that little short pass. Right. Third and ten for Minnesota. Shade sets up, rifles the ball complete to the 42-yard line. Aaron Osterman has a Minnesota first down, tackled by Chuck Winters. Oh boy, that was like a that was a pro type reception and a pro type throw there. Shade really stood in the in and in, in took the heat that time. He was getting a lot of pressure from the Michigan team. He stands in his pocket beautifully though. It's all around him. He drills it in there. Osterman jumps high to get the ball. That was that was an outstanding, outstanding catch there. We've seen him all year long really try to make the catches with his body rather than with his hands because of the injured wrist. First and ten Minnesota. That's a big third down conversion. Fake the reverse. Shade steps up. Throws across the middle. Incomplete. He had Osterman open at about the 20 yard line but he didn't have enough time to throw it long. I wish he'd have given it to Atwell that time. I think Atwell <laughs> could have got about 10 or 20 yards on it. That kind of fake reverse will usually hold the defensive backfield a bit but uh, Shade did not have time after the reverse to uh, to get the ball off. So just that was the problem. Right, yeah, and plus he got hit on the two. You can see that Osterman had a step on Woodrow Hankins, but the pocket collapsed. Second and ten. Green right side for Darkins. This play went for a touchdown in the first half. Darkins hangs on to the football. He ran laterally right at the first down yardage marker. And it appears that he may have picked up enough yardage for a go for first down before Clarence Thompson brought him down from behind. I like to see him going back to Darkins, even though he had the bad luck of dropping the ball here. He's your, he's your money ball player. You can see Darkins trying to pick up a little more, a little more yard by uh, a little more yardage by losing a little bit but that was a little close that time he almost uh, didn't get the first down it is a first down for Minnesota and as the Illini did last week you can see the Wolverines when they tackle Darkins always trying to put a hand on the football to strip it loose this is Javon Jackson 
knifes his way across the 45 to the 43-yard line. William Carr helped out on the tackle for Michigan. And Shade has not thrown an interception yet this afternoon. Wolfers have fumbled the ball a couple times. Shade is taking good care of the ball the last two or three games. He's played a good, consistent uh, game at the quarterback thing. He hasn't thrown up uh, any bad passes, hadn't tried to force it. Screen across the middle for Rios. The play was wide open, and Rios couldn't hang on to it. Well, he, he had plenty of room to run back there, too. It looked like it almost hit the referee. Referee, I think, was in, in the way a little bit. On the replay here. That's the same pass, Dick, that we talked about that you have to have to touch on. Now Rios just turned around, around and uh, the ball was already there. And we've seen some Michigan players slipping and sliding on this Minnesota drive. Six minutes left in the third quarter. Big third down. Jackson moves out of the backfield. Shade delivers complete to Tutu Atwell. And he slips and falls down at the 41-yard line where he initially made the reception. He was a yard or two shy of first down yardage. He took a hit and kept on going, but he is short of a first down, and the Gophers may be tempted to go for it here as well. No, instead, they bring on the punt team. Yeah, I think that's a good move. There's plenty of time left. You don't want to, uh, I think they were lucky in the first half going for it on fourth down. You don't have to take that kind of risk right now. First catch this afternoon for 2-2 Adwell. Mike Kimball will kick it away here. Beautiful kick. Much better than his first kick. We'll see where it lands and how the Gophers cover it. And it goes into the end zone. So the Wolverines will bring it back out to the 20-yard line and start from there with 5-10 left in the third quarter. Wolverines leading by St. Michigan Stadium. The Wolverines leading by six points. A disappointing first half for them, but you can bet Gary Moeller is happy with the way his team has come out and the offense has be their 20th straight bowl appearance. Second longest streak in the nation, only Nebraska, with 25 straight bowl appearances coming into this season, has a longer streak. And I like the Cornhuskers' chances of going to a bowl game this year. Todd Collins on a first down throw. Got to the time. Schumer wide open. And he's got it at the 42 yard line. Juan Hunter was there for Minnesota, but not close enough. Juan Hunter was giving him a lot of room on this play. Well, here Collins goes back, but again, he has too much time. They, they, they're they not putting any pressure on him there. They got double team and big Ed Hawthorne, you can see. But Collins throws a beautiful pass there, and he did a pro-type reception there, keeping both feet in. Just like that, a pickup of 23 yards. Wolverines. Had some receivers wide open in the first quarter. The Gopher defense did a much, much better job in coverage in the second quarter. That ball delivered low, incomplete at the 45-yard line. Rodney Heath there covering Amani Toomer. Have they gone to anyone other than Amani Toomer in the second half? I don't know why they should. Toomer fell down that time, though. They're still having some trouble with the uh, footing there. Here's the big ad. Yeah, that was good. excellent, uh, excellent protection there by Runyon. That used to be called holding. Holding. <laughs> <laughs> no flag, no foul. Second and ten for the Wolverines. 4:58 left in the third quarter. Screen dump to Wheatley. Tyrone Wheatley. Tyrone Wheatley. Touchdown, Michigan. Boy, that was a play just like you diagram it. It looks similar to Darkin's play when he ran it the same thing. You let one of these horses, either one of these backs, you let them out there in that open field, it's, it's dangerous.
You can slow him down, but you can't stop him. Yeah, they set the screen up real nice. There was some holding there, but uh, that's, that's tough for the referees to pick up, I'm sure. They've developed that play very nicely, though. They stopped him rushing, but it's hard to stop him on a screen pass like that. Neither one of those guys get an open field. 18 third quarter points for the Wolverines. And they lead by 13 with 447 left in the third quarter. The Gopher defense did a great job in the first half. But Tyrone Wheatley and Amani Toomer are leading the Wolverines to a very strong no money to come back. And a lot of people say, well, he wants to come back and win the Heisman. He will tell you that the Heisman Trophy really did not enter into his decision-making at all. He wanted to get his degree. He wanted to set some records here, but they were all secondary reasons. He wanted to get his degree, and he's always been somewhat of a maverick and been his own man. And maybe he is the only man who would have made the decision that he made. You look at the danger that the anyone particularly a running back takes and turning down a lot of money to play one more year of college football and he made the choice you don't see many athletes make that choice these days but uh, and that's not saying that they're wrong in taking the money because careers are so short there's so much risk of injury you've got to take it when you can Hamilton another short kick Cooper from the 16. Boxed in, gets out to the 26, and that's as far as it gets. Chris Howard, backup running back, making the play on the special team for Michigan. And a little slow off the pile for the Wolverines. Ben Huff, backup linebacker. Didn't take long for the Wolverines to get their second touchdown of the second half. The Gophers have to come back here now. They need two touchdowns. Uh, at least and so they have to come back and demonstrate that they're there to be reckoned with the second half this is what it's about now Michigan defense all charged up playing with their biggest lead of the game Garton busts outside and falls across the 30 to the 31 yard line a pickup of about five Woodrow Hankins again on the tackle Hankins has been a busy man here this afternoon. And perhaps on his next carry, Darkins might go into the record book. A gloomy afternoon here in Ann Arbor. Okay, throws to the sideline, complete for a go for first down at the 43-yard line. Johnny Woodson making his first grab before Ty Law bounced him out of bounds. That was a great throw by Shade, too. That's not, not an easy pass to complete all the way to the goal line, like uh, all the way to the end line like that. That's a hard one. Exactly, Keith, and, and especially going to the left side. That's one that you have to have to keep planted firmly and really follow through on it because any type of, any time you don't, you can be easily intercepted. They're on 39-yard line. First and 10 Gophers. Shade deep across the middle. Incomplete intended for Nelson. Greg Nelson hit right between. Well, you can't hit the, the guy between the numbers when he only wears one, I guess, but the ball was right there. <laughs> Shade had Darkens open in the flat, too, but... Decided to go longer to Nelson. It was a great throw. He should have had it. Right he's, between the M's, huh? He's getting set right on speed. You can't. He was looking. He heard footsteps that time. That's what happened there. Or snorting. <laughs> the footsteps of Chuck Winter. It'll be second and ten. You've got to make those catches, especially in this situation, in this kind of game. You, you've got to come up with a big play. Make right. Pass left to Woodson. What's into the 45-yard line, a pickup of about six yards. They've always Clarence said Thompson was the tackle for Michigan. They've said all year they like to get the ball to Woodson. They like how he can run with the ball after the catch. Quick little screen that time. Picked up a few yards. To the Gophers' face with a, another big third down situation. They need some points here in the third quarter. Spot running, 325 left. Mm -hmm. 
Shade will run. And pick up a Minnesota first down to the 48 of Michigan. Smart play by Tim Shade that time. And as he moved out of the pocket, the contain man for Michigan slipped at midfield again. Good, good decision by Shade. Again, the reason he was able to uh, pick up this first down was a slip right there, but also great protection by the Gopher offensive line. No back in the backfield again. All those defensive linemen know that they're going to be running or throwing the ball. Hey, Rick Berenson may be interested in William Carr because he's been acting like he's been on skates all afternoon long. Fell down twice on that play. Shade flips it across, incomplete. Pass intended for Chuck Rios. And the Gophers getting a case of dropsy here in this third quarter. I don't see Rios drop the ball very often. Either. That was surprising. That was a nice, looked like a pretty good throw by Shade. I think that's a third ball that uh, Chuck Rios has dropped in this football game, or not caught that he or otherwise would have caught. They took a little hit there that time after the ball, too. He's been standing in there, though. He's been standing in there. Might have been a little late. Kind of a little throw down. Take this as you go. Wolverines threatening the blitz, and here they come. Darkin breaks outside, slips and falls after a pickup of about seven yards. That's the first time we've seen Darkins lose his footing. Boy, Darkins looked like he was going to have some room on the outside there, too. He might be uh, that might be close to the record. He did. He was looking out there. He kept looking and kept looking, and just as he went to make his cut, uh, that's the first time we have seen him slip today. He's had remarkable uh, foot footing with what everyone else is doing here today. Deion Johnson finally got him, but Darkins looked like he could cut outside and maybe pick up a first down or more if he doesn't slip right there trying to cut back upfield. Officially a pickup of five. It's third and five. Shade going deep for Osterman. And there's a flag. Yep. Osterman was grabbed by Ty Law on a ball that I don't think Osterman would have been able to grab without the contact. No, it looked like Ty, um, Ty Long, Law looked like he was uh, losing his footing and figured he'd take a piece of Osterman on his way down. Yeah, he thought he was beat on that one, and he, he was the worst of two <laughs> evils, yes. But the pass wouldn't have got there. Uh, the pass was a little bit overthrown anyway. I was fortunate for the Gophers that time. A 15-yard mark off. On the defense, 15 yards, previous spot, first down. And while the officials set the football up deeper into Michigan territory, Chris or Tim Shade will go to the sideline. There Shade goes back. He lays it up there. Well, you don't know. If he yeah. hadn't tackled him, you don't know. He may, may have been there. It's hard to tell at that, but it definitely was interference. But if you're Ty Law, you just made a smart play because yep, if Osterman can make the grab, he's got a pickup of at least 25 yards and possibly a touchdown. So Ty Law hauled him down and gave up just 15 yards. Sure. They took the mess of two evils. 159 left in the third quarter. It's been all Michigan here in the third. That ball batted and picked off. Intercepted by Brent Blackwell. Brent Blackwell picked it up in the air and it was picked off by Woodrow Hankins, I believe, or Ty Law. Hankins, I believe. That was unfortunate. Shane had a good time there, too. He went back and was getting ready to drill it in there and uh, got the ball tipped. Let's tell whether that was a 22 or 23. It was 23. Woodrow Hankins, who picked up the deflection. We'll see who got a hand on it at the line of scrimmage. Shane didn't get back too far in the pocket that time, too. He only took about two steps, it looked like, I think. May have been a little close to his offensive lineman there. So the Wolverines thwart another Minnesota drive from the 16, Tyrone Wheatley. Got around Rodney Heath and steps out of bounds at the 30 yard line for a Michigan first down. We can't let the big fella get to rolling. Like we said, the initial part of the program. Once he gets going, he's dynamite. He is a dynamite runner. He's not only big, but he's fast on top of it. Their college the, goes back. The offensive line for uh, Michigan is also sticking with their block a lot better. There's a lot more cutback room for Wheatley than he had in the first half. First and 10 from the 31 yard line of Michigan. 
feet, dances around in the backfield and gets it out to the 33-yard line. Justin Congenius knocks him down there. Clock running, 135 left in the third quarter. Looks like they're going to just keep handing the ball to Wheatley. He's got a hot hand right now. 6-1, about 2.30. Gary Moeller wanted him to try to get down to about 2.20 this year. He didn't quite make it, but proper Jordan jumping on the pile and aggravating Wheatley a little bit. Well, it didn't seem like he really tried to put a lick on him. He kind of just leaned in the stomach. <laughs> no flags are thrown. And a short pickup for Bianca Patuco. Nice job by Langford. Looked like he was blocked, but he was able to get back. Bianca Patuco looks like he's hurt. Tim Bianca Patuco, who given the Wolverines a lot of depth in the backfield, comes off under his own power, but his right ankle took a little punishment on that carry. Ouch. Of the um, defensive lineman for Minnesota being blocked into the ankle of Bianca Batuco. Third and five. Tilmer makes a great grab with Rodney Heath Drake all over him. A Michigan first down. He couldn't have been on him any closer there. He was on him like a glove that time. Uh, it was just a perfect pass and an outstanding reception by Tumor. He's been doing that all afternoon here, though. He's kind of taking this game over, it seems. A first down for Michigan at midfield. And we'll see if they can get another playoff before the end of the third quarter. No. The third quarter belongs to the Wolverines. 18 third quarter points to open up a 13 point lead on Minnesota. You see it in the corner of the end zone come from the stands. Here it is, marshmallows. They are throwing them at gopher football players and sometimes MSC field reporters. Now I am an opportunist. <laughs> Don't worry. Sandy, Keith, I have put two in my pocket. I will get them to you after the game so you've got a snack to play and ride home. <laughs> but it's, it's tough to guard against those kind of mistakes. Right, that's just part of the game there. First and ten, Michigan. Ed Davis is the running back and he gets the call here. And he rattles off 13 yards before he's knocked out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Crawford Jordan knocked him down there. Another Michigan first down. Remember the halftime statistics? Well, the third quarter was dominated by the Wolverines. And they have done it through the air. Primarily 314 yards for Collins. Most of it in the third quarter in particular going to Amani Toomer. They haven't even looked at Mercury Hayes in the second half. Collins again going for Toomer in the corner. He's got it again. Michigan touchdown. Now that's the reason why they, they haven't possibly looked at Hayes. The way Toomer has been receiving that ball this afternoon, uh, the second half, they haven't needed to look at Hayes or anyone else. Terrence Blaine and Crawford Jordan were double covering Amani Toomer. A 38-yard touchdown pass. And Amani Toomer has taken over play here in the second half. Well, Toomer uses his body so well. He's 6'4", over 200 pounds, and positions his body so that he has a, an opportunity to make that catch. That left hand again was there, yep. though, but he did it smoothly where it, it, it wasn't... They're not it didn't look like that. an infraction, right. 25 unanswered points for the Wolverines in the second half. 14-31 to play in the football game of the Wolverines taking control of the football game thanks to Amani Toomer. Down, and he's been doing that. He did that on a couple passes earlier today, and he's done it once again. He just goes up there high and gets the ball. Terrence Blaine at 5'11", Toomer at 6'4". Quite a specimen. Well, Collins will do that also when you have a 6'5 quarterback that can see out there and has time to throw it. And with his uh, accuracy proficiency, you just can't let him.
sit there. I mean, when they rattled him and when they put pressure on him, they've been successful today. But when they sit there and give him time back there, uh, he's been he's been successful all day. Cooper steps up to the 13 to take Hamilton's kickoff. Raphael Cooper spilled as he gets to the 37-yard line, making the hit the kicker, Remy Hamilton, and he's made a couple of perhaps touchdown-saving tackles. Another brief drive for the Wolverines, scoring through the air. 38 yards from Collins to Toomer. The Gophers threw Collins off his game in the second quarter, but in the odd-numbered quarters, and now here in the fourth, he's... He's played very well. You can't help but look back at some of the missed opportunities the Gophers had in the first quarter, too. Against a good team on the road, you've got to score when you have the opportunity. Well, we'll see if the Gophers open it up here a little bit. They've gone with a short passing game through most of this football game. They've got to open it up here now, Dick. They have no choice. And off to Darkin. And a gain of nearly 10 yards before Clarence Thompson wrestled him down. The turnover on Minnesota's first possession, when Minnesota still had the lead, 15 to 13, may turn out to be the turning point of this football game. You can say, well, the Gophers should have had more than 15 at halftime, and that's certainly true. But the Gophers, if they'd come back with points in their first possession of the second half, might have changed the outcome of this game. And it's tough when you put the defense in that kind of position where they've got to stop and they've only got 30 yards to defend. Steve Morrison stops Darkins, but not until he can pick up a Minnesota first down. And Chris Darkins with that carry just surpassed Darrell Thompson's mark of 1,264 yards gained in a season. He'll be back next year. And Chris Darkins has had a brilliant junior season. Yes, he has, and he still has another game next week to go to add to it. Shane going deep to the sideline. Osterman's got it, steps out of bounds at the 25. And Aaron Osterman having himself a whale of a football game. There was some kind of disruption in the defensive backfield for Michigan because there was nobody close to Osterman that time. Right, Keith, he was wide open. I was hoping the shade saw him there. He was wide open, just waiting on the ball. If it hadn't been so close to the sideline, he probably could have taken that on in. Quick score here. We'll get him right back in it. Right, there's plenty of time left. Uh, plenty of time left for anything to happen, but they need a score here for sure. Dave fakes to Darkins, goes to the end zone. Atwell tried to spear it with one hand. He was open at the five, but the ball overthrown. Atwell was wide open on that play. Darkins, or uh, Shade just put a little too much on the ball. Right, that was Shade at that time. He just uh, got a little air under the ball, and they kind of stayed up on him that time. But Atwell was wide open, as we'll see here on the replay. Shade goes back, he sets well. Pass it, oh, he's right open. It just... He needed another 12 inches lower. Second and 10 for the Gophers. Rios hangs on, cuts inside, gets to the 15. That's about it. A yard or so shy of first down yardage. He was quadruple teamed at the 15-yard line. Among others, Jared Irons in on the tackle for the Wolverines. Obviously in four down territory here too, and, and a field goal isn't going to do anything for you. No, they have to have three scores. They need three scores uh, to get back in this game, and uh, field goals won't do anything for you at this point. Rios needs nine more catches to tie Omar Douglas's record of 130. Darkins fights his way to the 12-yard line, has a Minnesota first down, and it'll temporarily stop the clock. Jared Irons again piled on top and pinned Darkins down. Those two, two turnovers are frustrating, especially with some of the uh, success that the Gophers have had moving the ball. We talked about the Michigan defense and how difficult a year it has been for them. Chris Darkins... Finding some room to run here this afternoon. They've been tough yards, but 
He has become Minnesota's all-time single-season top rusher. But the Michigan defense has given up 20 touchdowns through the air. Darkins runs into his own man and gets across the 10-yard line. They ran, they ran that to the short side of the field that time, and Darkins really just didn't have anywhere to go. Uh, they're not backing up that far because the end zone is there. I'd like to see that same play to the wide side of the field. The uh, number we just gave you tells you a little bit about how tough Michigan still is to run against inside the red zone, and chances are if the Gophers are going to get in the end zone, they'll have to throw it in there. Second and seven. Clock running, 11.25 left. They are the second worst team against the pass in the Big Ten. Sure. Some type of rollout where he has time to time the pass and pick his receiver. Darkin gets back to the line, and that's it. William Carr grabbed him and gave him a big bear hug at the nine-yard line. Darkins was lucky to get the uh, handoff that time. There was some penetration. And Shade was uh, just barely got that ball too dark. I noticed today, too, that they're sending in the plays. They're not having the delay uh, with calling the ball. We haven't had that problem today, but they're sending in the plays. Top tackler on the team, Steve Morrison, his last home game here at Michigan Stadium. Darkens shifts out of the backfield on third and seven. Shade to the corner. Caught! No, incomplete at the one-yard line. Woodson had it momentarily, and he got drilled at the one-yard line by Ty Law. Oh, that was that same tough pass, Dick, that we talked about earlier, where he throws it to the left, and you really have to throw it. But that way, he shaped through the, the ball well. He almost slipped there, got his foot back again. Wobbly pass out there, but Time just out. as he caught Minnesota, the ball, it was knocked loose from Woodson. Close to a catch at the one-yard line. We'll see if what you've seen the maturity of him. It's a shame he has to graduate now because right. over the last three games, you've seen a great maturity in him, and he stood in there and been a great poised quarterback here. Perhaps Minnesota's last hope here on fourth and seven. Shade to the end zone, touchdown! That was a great example there. He was under. Eric Dalen, the tight end with a touchdown pass, and the Gophers are still in the football game. Shade hung in here. This time he got hit right after the ball was released. But it looked like one of the defenders again fell down, and Dalen made a nice catch. It was still a tough catch. Eric Dalen's third catch of the year. His first touchdown of the year. And the Gophers will go for two. There is an injured Michigan player down at the 18-yard line. I don't know why they would go for two. They only need one. They need three touchdowns. Now, if you get, if you, uh, they need two more with one point. So they don't yeah. need the two points. They did that before. He was a guy that hit time the talked to, uh, showed some of the maturity uh, in composure that you talked about a moment ago because uh, the pocket was collapsing around him. Zenkowitz and others were right there, but Shade delivered a strike to his tight end. Got the first points for Minnesota in the second half, and Chalberg will attempt the extra point. He's one of two in that department. This one's good. And Michigan's lead has been trimmed to 13 with 10-23 left in the football game. The Gophers get their third touchdown through the air against the Michigan defense. The length of the drive, the first touchdown catch of the year for Eric Dalen and Garrison Harmon might kick it deep. Nope, there's the onside kick. And it's covered nicely at the 48-yard line. For Michigan making a very smart play. Rob Sweat backed up linebacker. That was an odd kind of a onside kick, though. It kind of spun and spiraled right down there like well, a top. 
Artificial turf has done many things to football, but it's also improved your chances of recovering an onside kick with the bigger hops that it takes. Now, in this grass field, that ball just kind of rolled near midfield, and it was covered easily. Well, the Gopher defense is going to have to come up with a big play. I wish they had a little more room to work with uh, to come up with a big play, though. That, but Michigan is probably just going to try to run it as much as possible here. They're going to have to come up with a big fumble. Comes the horse. Wheatley. Hit hard by Rodney Heath as he gets to the 41 yard line. The numbers for Todd Collins, very impressive. A single game school record here this afternoon, which Todd Collins now with 5,700 yards through the air. And he backed up Elvis Gerback for a couple years here. So it's really. A remarkable last couple of years for Todd Collins. This is Davis. Davis dragged down at the 27 yard line. Craig Sauer finally wrestled him down. And Sauer has been all over the field today. Again, Michigan's offensive line is starting to get more push. On the Gopher defenders, there because there's nobody there until he's uh, three, four yards into the backfield. Davis is a good young back too. Yeah, they can rotate them through there uh, in pretty fine fashion. Wheatley, Bianca Batuco, Davis. This is Davis spinning his way across the 25 down to the 24 yard line Mike Max let's go down to you uh, by the sidelines well the touchdown pass to Eric Dalen you know we've talked all year about how they don't throw the tight ends much that was a play they put in specifically for Michigan this week it is a play that has worked in the past against Michigan also I had a chance to talk to the band they said they do draw the Minnesota router and they will dedicate a special version to you Dick Keith and Sandy if the Gophers can pull this one out well, we appreciate the sentiment. Um, right. I don't like the chances right now. If they can pull it out, we might even sing it for them. <laughs> <laughs> Davis, his third straight carry to the 21, and the Wolverines are quite content to keep it on the ground, keep the clock running. Eight and a half minutes to go. Jerome Davis made the tackle for Minnesota. You saw Mike Max on the sidelines. He's Monhorse Sandy Stevens and Dick Bramer above Michigan Stadium's field here. Mark Hershkowitz directing. Jim Scanlon producing our last road effort of the year. We've seen such scenic areas as Manhattan, Kansas, Bloomington, Indiana, West Lafayette, Indiana, Madison, Wisconsin, and now Ann Arbor. The fourth straight carry for Davis. And he gets a Michigan first down. Go for defense. Looks like they're wearing down, too. They've got to stick in there, though. They still got time. They got plenty of time. Uh, still a fumble to come loose. Michigan's just going to try to ram that ball down the throat and kill the clock now, uh, which they understand. And they've got the horses to do it. So uh, Minnesota has just got to come in there and uh, blitz or whatever is necessary now. Even a field goal puts them. In demise would mean yeah. at least three scores. Right. So they've got to just keep coming. They've got to keep coming. Keep the pressure on. Ed Davis turns the corner. Flag down at the four as Davis is knocked out of bounds at the eight. They're letting Ed Davis. Do some running here in the fourth quarter, aren't they? Well, they friendly had good running backs, so as far back as I can remember. But it's the depth. You talked about different. horses, and it is mm -hmm. plural because you get a guy like right. Davis who's got fresh legs out here now. He can rack up the yardage in a hurry. He took this Holding here ball and really just outran everybody around the from outside. The the from the end of the run. Well, Hunter loaded the boom Repeat. on him, I believe, First but he stood there. Didn't hardly phase him, and Hunter got the worst for the wear and tear there, I believe. When you're only 5'9", it's tough to get under a running back. Uh, Davis is only 5'9", 201 pounds. So he packs, packs a lot of punch in that short body. Yeah, he's a real stocky back. Like He looks more like a fullback. Of course, Wheatley is the same type of back, though. They seem to bring him big and fast. Seven and a half minutes to play with the Wolverines in front by 13. Over defense 
has not stopped the Wolverine here in the second half. That'll cost Michigan five more yards. We've had just three dead ball punt start on the offense. I believe in the football game. Two for Minnesota. And one for Michigan. Well, Michigan's trying to help the Gophers out here. They still need to uh, stop them, obviously. It'd be nice to come up with a big play. But even if they can hold them three points, they got a chance. That's right, because there's plenty of time in this game for anything to happen. I mean, uh, three or four touchdowns could be scored from this point. I've seen it happen. On the draw, Bianca Patuco keeps his legs churning, gets it down to the 20-yard line. I beg your pardon, that was Davis again, the uh, ball carrier. It is uh, difficult for your defense because they know they have to come up with a big play. So they're tackling the football or trying to. And in uh, perhaps a passing situation, you tend to gamble a little bit more in the secondary to try to come up with an interception. And as a result, you end up backpedaling in a hurry sometimes, and that's what's happening to Minnesota's defense right here. Gophers have to be careful, too. This is an idea play where after running, 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 you throw a little bootleg in there and go back the opposite way. Davis with a smart play, staying in bounds, and then he's finally thrown out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Jerome Davis finally caught up with him. Davis slammed down the brakes at the 20-yard line and cut up field like he just wanted to keep the clock running, but... The clock ends up stopping anyway. Close, well, about five yards short of a first down for Michigan. Looked like the Gophers thought that Lysanti had him out of bounds here and kind of relaxed, didn't stay up right there. That was a great run by Davis. Yes, it was. That was chasing Barry Sanders a little bit there, Keith. Third and five for the Wolverines. 6.41 left. Wheatley back in the ball game. And he gets the call on the draw. Close to, but a yard or so shy of first down yardage. Continuous. And on the tackle for Minnesota, along with Craig Sauer. Todd Wolkow comes off the pile. I think the crowd wants him to go for it. I want to go for it, but the smart play is to do the field goal here. We'll see what the coach decides. Yeah, you've got to go for a field goal. Exactly. We'll see. He makes a smart play as to go for that. You, you can't let the crowd coach, coach the game for you. It's the difference between 13 points and uh, 16 points. Exactly. And 16 points. The worst that can happen, you give up two touchdowns and you settle for a tie. Hamilton right in the middle of the field. He is a uh, Lou Groza candidate along with Minnesota's Mike Chalberg. That ball drilled through the uprights. 38-22, Michigan in front. A 24-yard field goal for Remy Hamilton. MN West, no snow on the ground. We have been spoiled. Yes, we have. We're not going to be tough like we Again, Michigan gets points out of a second-half possession. 28 second-half points for Michigan. And... Uh, an immediate possession right away to try to get another quick score. Yeah, that's true. Well, with only two touchdowns at that point, they were two touchdowns down. Uh, the go, you know, kick it down there, and they'd have to come back with a pass. That's the only thing that's been hurting them. That ball and hits and is fielded on a hop by Cooper. And Cooper tripped up as he crossed the 25-yard line, or he had the near sideline to sprint along. Instead, the Gophers will start with decent field position, but they do need to hurry. Ernest Sanders tripped up Raphael Cooper. That was a dangerous kick uh, for Cooper to let let bounce there because uh, that would have bounced the wrong, the wrong way, and it was a live ball. Luckily, the bounce came his way. You're right. He should have caught it on the slider, Keith. Yes, he almost he broke it, though. You know, as you watch this, watch it develop as they were coming here toward us, uh, they almost broke open for him. Shane throws complete to Aaron Osterman for Minnesota first down. Each team with two timeouts left, but Michigan not planning on using theirs anytime soon. Gophers have to hurry. They, they don't need the no huddle yet, but they've got to get in and out of the huddle quickly. First 
down at that clock stop there on first down. It does till the yard markers no. are set and the play is resumed or the referee blows his whistle. Clock running 527 left. Shade flips it to the flat incomplete. Flags are thrown. The pass intended for Darkins, and he was absolutely swallowed by Michigan's William Carr. He was held on that one. Uh, Shade was going to throw a screen pass to him, and Shade wisely threw it away. Carr was right on top of Darkins, and you couldn't see Darkins. You couldn't. <laughs> like an eclipse came over him. Holding on the defense. Ten yards. Previous spot. First down. That was a hold on Darkins. So they, they, they did call it. No, it's against Michigan. Right, but I mean, they, oh. they, he was holding dark and holding right. dark. That's right. <laughs> well, William Carr is again six feet, 285 pounds, and uh, that's why we couldn't see dark. <laughs> <laughs> Comes out to midfield, and that will stop the clock. 5:21 left. There's Carr. They drop him back from the line of scrimmage on the pass plays very often. And in that play, they send him into the flat to cover literally Chris Dargan. Darkins takes the handoff. Picks up about three yards, but the Gophers will watch a lot of time expire or call a timeout here. Jared Irons tackled Chris Darkins. They've got to get in the huddle and get, get their play called and get on out of there now. They can't waste any time. Time is precious now, but they still have a lot of time. They Five minutes to go in the football game. Deep to Atwell, picked off. High Law has it at the Michigan 10 yard line. Atwell on a slant. And Shade misfired, threw a little bit too high and long, and Ty Law picked it off. But Shade had a man on both sides there, but he, he threw it right at the defensive man. Uh, there was a man on the outside. He could have threw it out there to make it safe like he's been doing all this time, but he threw it right at the defender that time. See, there's a man outside, man inside, and he threw it at the defender. That's the only play that he's misfired on today. Well, we've seen him deliver some high throws and some low throws for that matter. Shade uh, throwing an interception there and we were talking about him winning or receiving the starting quarterback spot and he did win it by default. It's not like he ended up winning it uh, in practice or through his game performance literally out of desperation. They had to pick somebody it turned out it was Shade and he has played very well since being given the starting job, Ogan Akbar with a tackle for Minnesota. Again, the Wolverines will try to take as much time off the clock as they can. Well, he's been consistent. Is he's been uh, you know very consistent uh, for the most part for the last few games. But that one or two plays that he'll kind of just get that old erratic look that he had uh, earlier in the season. But for the most part, he's played a, a steady and good game. Picked up of about three more for Davis. Less than four minutes to play. By throwing it right at that defensive man, it didn't even give the other receivers time to go up and, uh, you know, even fight and compete for the ball. That was the only thing on that play. I think you have to admire what you've just seen there. Jim Wacker, still very intense along the sidelines. And the fact that that he got this team ready to play this game and to have a halftime lead I think says some very healthy things about the program. This is Davis. Knocked out of bounds at the 31 yard line by Rodney Heath. I think it does have to say a lot for the program. They've got some good leaders on the team be able to come back emotionally from some of the losses that they've had and they've uh, I, you've got to be encouraged by the Gophers future because uh, they've got some talent on this team so they're going to be fine see a nice run here by Davis and of course from the fan standpoint they're going yeah 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 we've heard it all before we want a winning team and uh, this will not be a winning season for Minnesota as uh, a timeout has been called here here to see the progression that they've made, I'd say. 
I thought that Davis went out of bounds, but uh, the clock is running now with three minutes to go. Davis is getting the call on virtually every down here in the fourth quarter. Like a little choo-choo there. Yeah. <laughs> he just keeps chugging. Pierre Cooper, the tight end, lost his helmet on the play, but stayed in the play and, and blocked. Do you think that there was a quarterback controversy this year? Wait till next year. Corey Saunders only played a handful of downs this year. Chris Walsh, an unproven college quarterback. And it's still going to be the key component to whether how the Gophers will do again next year also, the quarterback position. And uh, Perry. And a big one for Chris Floyd. Inside the 10 yard line. Chris Floyd nearly took it all the way. Boy, that was a tremendous effort there. Tremendous effort to catch him. I didn't think he would. Chris Floyd with just his fifth carry of the year. Here he goes back. It's just a little draw play. He breaks it over here to the outside. There's no one out there. And now it's just a foot race. It's just a foot race. Oh, he nipped him. He just nipped him there. Todd, Todd Collins comes out of the football game for Michigan, and backup quarterback Jason Carr is in now. Illegal substitution on the offense. 12 men in the huddle. The Wolverines tried to get as many players, new players, into the game as possible, and I think they ended up with two quarterbacks <laughs> in the huddle. There's Jason Carr, the backup to Todd Collins. Again, the uh, starter or backup last year. Jay Reimersma is now a tight end. And Cordell Stewart had the ball dropped into Michael Westbrook's hands, and the Buffaloes picked up a dramatic win. Jason Carr, a quarterback. Walter Smith in at a wide receiver spot. And Walter Smith. One of their top returning receivers suffered a knee injury. And he is a captain on this Michigan team. This is his first catch of the season. In his first game of the season. And Michigan will win this football game, but one of the more emotional moments you've just seen is Walter Smith comes up with a otherwise meaningless catch. Pick up of just a yard to the corner. Incomplete. Juan Hunter in on the coverage of pass intended for Chad Pedersen. Gary Moeller up by 16 points, letting his second string offense try to get a touchdown here. That was close to a touchdown. It sure was. <laughs> to the five yard line. Chris Howard with the carry. And the fans exhorting Gary Moeller to go for it here on fourth and five. Gophers are showing a lot of character here too, and not, uh, not laying down, letting them get in. Well, you look at the players out there from Minnesota. Consemius is in there. Sauer is in there. Jim Wacker going with a number of his first string players here to try to keep this game respectable. Regardless of what happens here, this has been a respectable effort by Minnesota. A minute to play. And the Gophers will take over on down. Howard again with the run to about the four yard line. So the Wolverines turn it over on downs. Wins at home against Northwestern this afternoon. The Hawkeyes will stay out of last place. Northwestern won't be there because they've got a couple of conference wins. 
Osterman gets to the 15 yard line before he's knocked out of bounds by Woodrow Hankins. Boy, I, Woodrow Hankins is my defensive player of the game for Michigan. He's been in on half the tackles, it seems. Yeah, he sure has. Uh, this is a disappointing loss for the Gophers, but they, it was respectable, especially uh, at, at halftime, obviously. Oh, Michigan they knew they were there. in a the game. They definitely knew they were in a the game, Keith. Osterman runs out of bounds. 43 seconds left. And of course, next week will be uh, Kim Shane's last game, the entire senior class playing its final game for Minnesota next Saturday. Tutu Atwell with an acrobatic grab. And he gets across the 40 to the 42-yard line. And the Gophers may use one of their timeouts here. The little clock will temporarily stop with the first down. We'll have next Saturday's game for you. Yeah, they're going to close it out here at Senior Day. You see right over here is the little brown jug, and it's staying in Michigan, and that was their goal going in. It's Senior Day. Will Smith with the big catch, Tyrone Wheatley. That's the brown jug in there. They're happy to have it back here. Here comes Todd Collins, the quarterback with the outstanding day for the Wolverines. The fans are up here. It's going to be a celebration Minnesota, time down here. Third and last. And what, that was one of the one of the few sacks that the Gopher offensive line has given up this year. Inches, and that seven inches is what separates Amani Toomer from the, most of the Gopher secondary. It came down to athlete versus athlete, and Toomer was just too tall for much of the Gopher secondary. <laughs> Gophers will give it one more try here. And they'd like to put one more touchdown on the board, just 25 seconds left, and that's not going to get them anywhere. Down here on the Michigan sideline, they're celebrating. They're congratulating Tyrone Wheatley, of course, for sticking around, for staying in school. You remember, he had an opportunity, as you talked about earlier, to go to the NFL after his junior year. He decided to stay. Today is senior day. Many of the fans right behind the Michigan bench are thanking him for sticking around and putting up the record-setting numbers that he has. Michigan has not had a lot of success at, at home this year. I'm sure this one means a lot to them. And I see fourth down and 13 here. 19 seconds remaining. There's a relieved uh, Michigan bench right there with Wheatley talking to the crowd. The Gophers with one more opportunity here. Shade will air it and give it on, put it on the ground. I have a tough time seeing here behind the Michigan bench. They're celebrating, and they can't stop the clock. This, this one is over. The Brown Jug's going to stay in Michigan. A few more seniors coming up. They're getting the vote vision here. 105,000 showed up. Much of many have left right now. It's an emotional scene down here. Many of the Wolverines realize this is their last game at home. Last time they'll put on the maize and blue. Next week it's to Ohio State. They want to get to the Citrus Bowl, and they're starting to talk about that right now. Ty Tyrone Wheatley. There's the little brown jog. They're taking it out there, the brown jug, and you know, talking to the coaching staff from Michigan before the game, they said the brown jug probably isn't quite as significant to them as it is Minnesota unless they lose. The players don't talk about the little brown jug much until they get beat by Minnesota, then they realize what they lost. Otherwise, they said, it just stays in a crate all year. It's staying here in Michigan this year. 38-22, the final, the Wolverines win. We'll be back to wrap it up after this.
Michigan. The Gophers took a 15-10 halftime lead, and it looked like they had a chance for another upset for the first time since 1986. It did not happen. Michigan, led by Todd Collins, scored 28 second-half points for Dick Bramer, for Keith Fonors, for Sandy Stevens, Tim Scanlon, Mike, Mark Hershkowitz, and our fine crew from here in Detroit. The final score, Michigan, 38, the Gophers, 22. Next week, we'll be at home, the Metrodome, the finale, the Gophers in Iowa. Thanks for watching.